भरोसा खुद पे करो तो ताकत बन जाती है और दूसरों पे करो तो कमजोरी इफ यू ट्रस्ट योर सेल्फ देन इट बिकम्स योर स्ट्रेंथ बट इफ यू ट्रस्ट ऑन अदर्स देन इट इज योर वीकनेस सो हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज चंद्रशेखर वेलकमिंग यू ऑल टू द मैराथन सेशन फॉर हाइड्रोलिक मशीन व्हिच इज गोइंग टू बी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर ऑल द सिविल एज वेल एज मैकेनिकल एक्सपीरियंस so guys please do join me fast so that we can start the session as early as possible and this session is going to be very very important i am going to discuss the complete hydraulic machine in a single go so first of all good morning everyone namaskar adab suprabhat sat sri akal assalam alaikum this is chandrashekhar mechanical engineering graduate from iit delhi welcoming you all once again to this maha marathon session for hydraulic machine which most of the students were expecting or were asking to have this beautiful session wonderful session so that you guys can benefit and you perform well in this particular topic when it comes to your gate 2023 examination so first of all please do let me know if i am audible and visible to everyone please do write in the comment section if my audio and video are all clear or not so i am coming all the way from manesar that is around 60 to 70 kilometers away from here to just to take this session and you as you all know the weather in delhi ncr is not that good still i am here to help you out in every possible way i want your your uh, saath and your dedication your uh, energy so that it also motivate me to have this session in the most simple and most fruitful manner yes please do let me know if i am audible and visible onkar good morning welcome welcome to the session shall we start are you all ready to explore the beauty of hydraulic machine please do let me know where do you stand in understanding of hydraulic machine yes chakravarti production part 2 okay i will ask ravindra sir to plan session for the remaining part of production definitely we will you will be going to have all the type of help which is required for cracking your gate 2023 examination so everybody please let me know through the comment section those who are watching me live and please mention your place of attending the class from where you are attending the class where you are located so in meanwhile let me quickly introduce myself most of the students already know about me but those who are those who are just a second just a second so this is my introduction okay good 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 chakravarti so this is the beauty of uh, online classes that at any corner of the india if you want to have the dedication or if you are having the dedication to yeah this is not working thank you hmm. all right so in any part of the india if you want to crack the gate examination we are able to reach to to you if you are dedicated enough to crack this examination this is my quick introduction My name is Chandrasekhar. I am having more than ten years of teaching experience in Gate IES and PSU. Mechanical engineering graduate from IIT Delhi, and I have also cleared the engineering services examination. Worked in sales for a couple of years, and I am quite comfortable in these many subjects of mechanical engineering. And fluid mechanics is common subject for mechanical as well as civil engineers. civil engineering students so many students have this notion whether hydraulic machine is part of their syllabus or not are you guys aware that hydraulic machine 
is having the same type of weightage or same type of importance in civil engineering branch as that of mechanical engineering. So, if you have this notion that hydraulic machine is not important for civil engineers, that is the wrong notion. So, everyone please do share this session to all your friends, either mechanical or civil engineers who are going to appear for GATE 2023. This session is going to be important for all of them. You can always connect with me through the mail ID which is there on the screen and you can join me on the telegram group if you are not part of my telegram group yet. The group is my telegram channel is mechanical by Chandra Shekhar and the link is also there on the screen. All right, this is the link to join my telegram group. So, what exactly we are going to discuss in the session, I will come to that point. But before that, let me quickly uh, give you a an important information. We are going to start two series from today onwards on your favorite Baiju's YouTube channel for mechanical as well as civil engineers. The last moment revision series that is formula revision series starting from today. For all the mechanical and civil experience every day there will be one subject and the complete formula list will be will be given in the single session. All right. So very, very important session because students always forget or they have a doubt in their mind whether you whether you will be able to memorize or recollect the formula or not in your examination. So the last moment formula revision is going to be very, very important. So this is the complete formula revision series schedule for civil engineering students starting from today. Today, uh, Abhinav Negi sir will be starting the session for geotech and then you can have the look for all the other session which are going to be conducted every next day. And for mechanical engineers, this is the schedule for mechanical engineers. Today, Dheera sir will be taking the formula revision session for theory of machines and on 23rd, I will be taking the session for heat and mass transfer. All right. You can have the complete schedule in your on your telegram group and stay tuned. And if please do share this, uh, this sheet or share this information to all your friends who are going to appear for gate 2023 examination. This is the schedule for mechanical engineers other than this formula revision series. One more series is going to be started today itself. That is the most predicted questions. Actually, we cannot predict the questions from uh, for the gate examination because always every time gate asks the new question. You all are aware about that. But the concept which had been repeated every year and which are most important in a particular subject around 10 to 12 question we will be bringing each day for each subject which will help you to revise the concept through questions and you will feel better, you will feel more confident when the question comes from that particular concept in your final exam. So, this again is going to be very, very important the, because the remaining time around 15 days are left for your gate examination. You cannot study the new subject or you cannot study the new topic actually or you cannot uh, uh, study the new concept. So, whatever the concept which are very, very important for your gate examination, if you can recollect or if you can revise those concepts and if you can revise the formula, then your preparation is up to the level you will definitely perform as per your capability in your gate examination. So, again, ask your friends to be part of these sessions. This is predicted question series schedule for civil engineering. 21st, Richa Ma'am is going to start the session from today for civil engineers and for mechanical engineers, Dheera sir will be taking the production engineering. For mechanical, these are the important series which are going to be very, very beneficial for all the aspirants who are going to appear for gate examination. So, let us start our session. Please do like, share and subscribe our Baiju's YouTube channel and share this link of this uh, this session to all your friends, all uh, your uh, uh, seniors, juniors who are 
seriously aspiring for cracking gate examination the session is going to be very very important so what are what all are we are going to discuss in this session let us discuss this first of all i will be talking about the velocity triangle very very important topic how to draw the velocity triangle once you are able to understand how to draw the velocity triangle you will be able to understand the analysis of those velocity triangle so the prerequisite is understanding how to draw the velocity triangle that will be our first topic and then we will be talking about the various performance parameter for a turbine as well as for a pump all right then again very very important topic of hydraulic machine that is specific speed for a turbine as well as for a pump the next will be the complete discussion for impulse turbine and reaction turbine can you just let me know what is what is the difference between impulse turbine and reaction turbine what is the basic difference between impulse turbine and reaction turbine we will have the complete or the detailed discussion for the, these two turbines and then i will enter into the centrifugal pump i will discuss the analysis of the centrifugal pump and then again important concept of for centrifugal pump that is npsh what is the full form of npsh yes impulse turbine uses the kinetic energy of the fluid to develop power reaction turbine uses the pressure energy of the fluid to develop power that is the basic difference between impulse and reaction turbine then centrifugal pump then npsh what is the full form of npsh what exactly is npsh can you let me know what is npsh and last but not the least we will be having a discussion about reciprocating pump this will complete our session or this will conclude our hydraulic machine session yes npsh is one of the important terminology in hydraulic pumps or in centrifugal pump it is very common term which is used for centrifugal pump that is net positive suction head so let us start the reference book let me uh, talk about some reference book from where you can study the hydraulic machine one of the beautiful book written for hydraulic machine is r k bansal if you want to understand the theory for theory fluid mechanics and hydraulic machine by r k bansal or modi and seth you can refer and other than that for numerical practice you can go with or you can practice the numerical from r k bansal as well but subramanyam is having k subramanyam is having only the numericals in this book so they are well designed the difficulty level is gradually increasing from the lowest difficulty to increasing the difficulty level so you can you can practice some numericals from subramanyam and the mock test are going to be very very important always appear for the mock test and try to practice more and more then only you develop the confidence and you will be able to clear the gate examination or clear the question or you will be able to solve the question which will be going to be asked in gate examination all right so what is fluid machinery let us start the discussion it is also called as turbo machine turbo means spin fluid machinery is also known as turbo machines or hydraulic machine because there are rotating part that is why they are known as turbo machines or we can call them as hydraulic machine there are two type of hydraulic machine because the hydraulic energy is used in their working that is why they are known as hydraulic machine there are two types of hydraulic machine one is hydraulic turbine and hydraulic pump there are two type of hydraulic machine one is the hydraulic turbine another is hydraulic pump all right so what exactly is the hydraulic machine the machine which convert either fluid hydraulic energy what is fluid hydraulic energy 
द फ्यूड हाइड्रोलिक एनर्जी कंसिस्ट ऑफ प्रेशर एनर्जी ऑफ द फ्यूड पोटेंशियल एनर्जी ऑफ द फ्यूड प्लस काइनेटिक एनर्जी ऑफ द फ्यूड सो दिस कंबाइन टूगेदर बिकम द हाइड्रोलिक एनर्जी ऑफ द फ्यूड द मशीन विच आइदर कन्वर्ट द हाइड्रोलिक एनर्जी ऑफ द फ्यूड इन टू मैकेनिकल एनर्जी और मैकेनिकल एनर्जी इन टू हाइड्रोलिक एनर्जी सो वेन द हाइड्रोलिक एनर्जी ऑफ द फ्लूड इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू मैकेनिकल एनर्जी द डिवाइस इज कॉल्ड एज टर्बाइन टर्बाइन कन्वर्ट हाइड्रोलिक एनर्जी ऑफ द फ्लूड इन टू मैकेनिकल एनर्जी and when the mechanical energy is converted into hydraulic energy when the mechanical energy is converted into hydraulic energy the device is called as pump so that is the difference between turbine and the pump it is there for a hydraulic machine is very well part of the gate syllabus don't have this notion hydraulic machine is the part of gate syllabus don't skip this topic and nowadays hydraulic machine is becoming more and more important for gate examination there are questions asked in not only in gate in all the other examination hydraulic machine has become important part of the of the paper so first is turbine turbine is a power producing machine i have already told you the hydraulic energy of the fluid gets converted into mechanical energy part of the hydraulic energy of the fluid converts into mechanical energy that instrument that device or that machine is called a turbine so if we draw the total energy line if we draw the total energy line the fluid is entering at section 1 the fluid is leaving at section 2 across the turbine so if we draw the total energy line for this hydraulic machine the total energy of the fluid decreases across the turbine this is the total energy head at 1 this is the total energy head at 2 this is called as energy gradient line this is how the energy gradient line will be drawn for hydraulic machine h is the total energy head what is the total energy head total hydraulic energy head of the fluid sum of pressure energy potential energy and kinetic energy it is the total energy head so if we write the energy conservation equation this difference is called as ht if we write the energy conservation for 1 and 2 the flow is from 1 to 2 the fluid is flowing from 1 to 2 the fluid is flowing from 1 to 2 so we can say h1 is equal to h2 plus ht plus the loss if any across the turbine plus hl that is the energy equation that will be the energy equation sometimes the questions are asked from the energy conservation equation only sometimes the questions might be asked from the energy conservation equation only the total energy head at 1 is equal to total energy head at 2 plus the ht what is ht ht is called as here we can call ht to be net or effective head developed by the turbine or decreased by the turbine net head which is decreased by the turbine h is the net head which is decreased by the turbine if there is any loss across the turbine that will be taken into consideration if there is no loss then hl will be zero so ht will become h1 minus h2 net head decreased by the turbine and we can write the power which is produced by the turbine the power produced by the turbine that is m dot into g into ht that is the amount of power mechanical energy produced by the turbine per unit time where m dot is equal to density into discharge that is how we can find out the amount of power which is produced by the turbine all right clear the next is hydraulic pump which is power consuming machine pump is power consuming machine in pump mechanical energy which is supplied from outside is converted into hydraulic energy of the fluid 
द मैकेनिकल एनर्जी विच इज सप्लाइड फ्रॉम आउटसाइड कन्वर्ट्स इन टू हाइड्रोलिक एनर्जी ऑफ द फ्लूड मोर स्पेसिफिकली द पंप इंक्रीजेज द प्रेशर एनर्जी ऑफ द फ्लूड वॉट डज पंप डू इट इंक्रीजेज द प्रेशर ऑफ द फ्लूड प्रेशर एनर्जी इट इज बेसिकली increasing the pressure energy of the fluid when the pressure energy of the fluid is increased then we can say the total hydraulic energy of the fluid gets increased it is power consuming device so pump here energy will be supplied to the pump so if we draw the total energy line across the pump the fluid is entering at section 1 the fluid is leaving from section 2 so if we show draw the energy gradient line across the pump it will be like this this is h1 this is h2 and the difference of these two let me call i will tell so this is the power given to the pump so if we write the energy equation energy equation this is the total energy line or energy gradient line pump increases the total energy of the fluid pump is the equipment which increases the total energy of the fluid otherwise the total energy of the fluid always decrease in the flow direction you must be aware about that so if we write the energy conservation equation can you write the energy conservation equation for a pump very very important the energy at inlet h1 plus energy supplied to the pump or the head supplied to the pump hp is equal to h2 plus if there is loss in the pump that is how the energy conservation equation is written hp is the power or the head supplied to the pump energy head supplied to pump and what is this this is known as manometric head what is it called it is called as manometric head and the manometric head hm is equal to either we call it as h2 minus h1 or we can call it as hp minus hl in the pump hl is the frictional head loss in the pump this is called as net head raised by the pump that is the energy increased by the pump net head raised by the pump is equal to hp minus hl or h2 minus h1 or we can call it as manometric head that is called as head raised by the pump or manometric head now if the question asks you what is the power given to the pump then the power given to the pump or power supplied to the pump will be equal to power supply to the pump is equal to m dot into g into hp that is the amount of power supply to the pump and if the question ask you what is the power raised by the pump that is power raised by the pump power raised by the pump is equal to m dot into g into hm hm is the manometric head so this is how the energy conservation equation for can be written for hydraulic pump all right koi confusion hai to bataiye isme if anybody is having any doubt you can just let me know for an example if h1 is 100 unit agar h1 ki value 100 unit hai and h2 is 60 and there is 10 unit of loss loss is 10 units hl is equal to 10 unit what is the manometric head everybody please do let me know through the comment section if there is bataiye what is the manometric head if h1 energy at inlet is 100 unit energy at outlet is not 60 sorry energy at outlet it will be increased na it is let us say or let me write it as h1 is equal to let us say 60 let me call it as 60 let me call h2 as 100 h1 is 60 h2 is 100 then what will be the net head raised by the pump hm kitna hoga net head raised by the pump will be how much 
अगर एच वन की वैल्यू सिक्सटी है एच टू की वैल्यू हंड्रेड है ये एच एल टेन है सो द नेट हेड रेज बाय द पंप विल बी इक्वल टू फोर्टी यूनिट एच एम विल बी फोर्टी यूनिट वॉट अबाउट एच पी एच एम विल बी फोर्टी यूनिट एंड एच पी विल बी इक्वल टू फिफ्टी यूनिट दैट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन एच पी एंड एच एम आई होप दिस इज क्लियर बताइए आर यू एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड इट ऑन ऑल उसके बाद बिफोर गोइंग फॉर द ड्रॉइंग ऑफ द वेलोसिटी ट्राइंगल और एनालिसिस ऑफ द वेलोसिटी ट्राइंगल वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड द नोटेशन विच वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस और विच वी आर गोइंग टू यूज इन अवर डिस्कशन द वेरियस नोटेशन हाइड्रोलिक मशीन इस तरह से होती है देर इज द शाफ्ट एंड इट इज हैविंग ए रोटर दिस इज कॉल्ड एज रोटर रोटर इज द रोटेटिंग पार्ट फॉर ए टर्बाइन इट इज कॉल्ड एज रनर एंड फॉर ए पंप इट इज कॉल्ड एज इंपेलर टर्बाइन के लिए रनर बोला जाता है इसको इंपेलर के लिए पंप बोल पंप के लिए इंपेलर बोला जाता है रोटर इज ए जनरल टर्म एंड रोटर इज हैविंग ब्लेड Which are attached to the rotor. They are called as rotor blades. These are the rotor blades. These are the rotor blades. Uske alawa, there are fixed blades. These are fixed blades. Inko stator blades bhi bolte hain. So there are two types of blade. One is rotor blade, which are attached to the rotor. Or which are attached to the rotating part, and there are fixed blades which are called as stator blades. So there are two types of blades. Yes, Deepak, it is manometric head. It is always the manometric head. So turbine के लिए अगर बात करें, how the turbine develops the power? The fluid is traveling. Try to understand here. The fluid. travels over the the fluid travels over the rot stator blades and striking the rotor blade when they strike the rotor blade that is point 1 the point 1 is the point inlet point where the fluid strikes the blade the fluid strikes the blade the rotor blade blade means the rotor blade that is point 1 when the fluid strike the rotor blade it transfer the momentum it transfer the angular momentum to the uh, to the rotor blade and due to momentum the rotor blade start rotating and because the rotor blades are attached to the rotor the rotor is start rotating and due to which the shaft start rotating like this so that is how the power is produced by the turbine and once the the momentum is transferred to the rotor blade the fluid leaves the turbine like this this point is point 2 Point one and two are the inlet and outlet points. Point two is the exit point. Fluid leaves the blades, the rotor blades. Point one will be used for the point where the fluid is going to strike the rotor blade. Point two is the point where the fluid is leaving the rotor blade. Point one and two, and the rotation will be clockwise, isn't it? Clockwise. and that will be taken as positive whatever the rotation is developed that will be taken as positive so first of all we define the blade velocity or we can call it as tangential velocity of the blade or we can call it as peripheral or circumferential velocity of the blade at inlet it is u1 at outlet it will be u2 u1 and u2 are the tangential velocity of the blade at point 1 and point 2 can you just let me know what will be the direction of u1 can anybody let me know what will be the direction of u1 <laughs> left or right l for left r for right everyone what will be the direction of u1 <clears throat> the direction of u1 please do let me know is it l or r left or right the tangential velocity of the rotor blades the tangential velocity of the rotor blade or we can call it as blade velocity blade speed 
बिकॉज द रोटेशन इज क्लोक वाइज बिकॉज द रोटेशन इज क्लोक वाइज देन यू वन विल बी हैविंग दिस डायरेक्शन इज एंट इट टूअर्ड्स राइट एंड साइड वॉट अबाउट यू टू वॉट विल बी द डायरेक्शन ऑफ यू टू यस दीपक वेरी नाइस आई वॉन्ट एवरी वन टू रेस्पॉन्ड वॉट इज द डायरेक्शन ऑफ यू टू पॉइंट टू वॉट इज द डायरेक्शन ऑफ टेन ब्लेड वेलोसिटी एट पॉइंट टू इज इट टूअर्ड्स लेफ्ट और टूअर्ड्स राइट विल इट बी टूअर्ड्स लेफ्ट और टूअर्ड्स राइट बताइए ना 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 बिकॉज लिसन वेरी केयरफुली ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड एवरी वन कमिटिंग मिस्टेक हियर ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड बिकॉज बोथ द पॉइंट वन एंड टू आर ऑन द सेम साइड ऑफ एक्सिस ऑफ रोटेशन दिस इज द एक्सिस ऑफ रोटेशन पॉइंट वन एंड टू आर ऑन द सेम साइड ऑफ एक्सिस ऑफ रोटेशन सो बिकॉज ऑफ क्लोक वाइज रोटेशन ड्यू टू क्लोक वाइज रोटेशन यू वन एंड यू टू बोथ विल बी हैविंग द डायरेक्शन टूअर्ड्स राइट एंड साइड इज एंड इट पॉइंट वन एंड टू आर ऑन द सेम साइड ऑफ द एक्सिस ऑफ रोटेशन सो द डायरेक्शन ऑफ यू वन एंड यू टू दैट इज द डायरेक्शन ऑफ ब्लेड मोशन वी कैन से द डायरेक्शन ऑफ ब्लेड मोशन इज टूअर्ड्स राइट एंड साइड एंड यू वन कैन बी रिटर्न एज R1 वन इंटू ओमेगा एंड यू टू कैन बी रिटर्न एज आर टू इंटू ओमेगा इज दिस क्लियर द डायरेक्शन एंड मैग्नीट्यूड आर वन कैन बी रिटर्न एज डी वन बाई टू दिस इज आर वन एंड दिस इज आर टू आर टू सो वी कैन से यू इज इक्वल टू आर इंटू ओमेगा आर इंटू ओमेगा और वी कैन राइट आर इज इक्वल टू डी बाई टू Into omega that is two pi n by sixty. So we can say u is equal to pi into d into n by sixty. For inlet u one will be equal to pi into d one into n by sixty. D one and d two are the diameter of point one and point two. And r one and r two are the radial distance of point one and point two respectively. N is the RPM of the shaft. Revolution per minute. Is this clear? Blade velocity. Yes, Deepak. I am talking about the turbine. Even if it is a pump, even if it is a pump, if the rotation of the rotor is clockwise, the direction of U one and U two will be towards right hand side because point one and point two are on the same side. Whether it is a turbine or a pump, the point one and point two are on the same side of the axis of the rotation. That is why the direction of U one and U two will be same. If point one and point two would have been on the other side of axis of rotation, then u one and u two would have the opposite direction. So that is called as blade velocity. Magnitude we can find r omega, and the direction can be obtained from the rotation of the rotor. I hope this is clear. The next one is v. I will be using v for absolute velocity of the fluid at point one u one at point two u two. Point one absolute velocity of the fluid is what the velocity of the fluid with respect to ground. If you are sitting on the ground, if you are sitting on the ground, if you are sitting on the ground and observe the fluid motion, then you will observe the real absolute velocity of the fluid. And absolute velocity of the fluid is obtained by absolute velocity of the fluid is obtained by that by drawing a tangent to the fixed blade or the stator blade if we draw a tangent to the fixed blade because ground is stationary because ground is stationary and the fixed blade is also stationary isn't it if we draw a tangent to the fixed blade then we will get the direction of absolute velocity v1 and here there will be another fixed blade let us say if we take the tangent then it will be v2 v1 and v2 are actually absolute velocity is actually tangent to the fixed blade fixed or stator blade do you understand it absolute velocity the direction of absolute velocity can be obtained by by having a tangent to the stationary blades now the absolute velocity can be further divided into two parts one is known as whirl component the 
एब्सोल्यूट वेलोसिटी कैन बी डिवाइडेड इनटू टू पार्ट्स वन इज नॉन एज वर्ल कंपोनेंट और वी कैन कॉल इट एज टेंजेंशियल कंपोनेंट ऑफ द एब्सोल्यूट वेलोसिटी एट इनलेट इट इज वीडब्ल्यू वन एट आउटलेट इट विल बी वीडब्ल्यू टू व्हाट इज द वर्ल कंपोनेंट और टेंजेंशियल कंपोनेंट व्हिच इज रिस्पांसिबल फॉर डेवलपिंग पावर इन केस ऑफ टरबाइन बिकॉज इट इज द टेंजेंशियल वेलोसिटी व्हिच विल डेवलप द मोमेंटम एंगुलर मोमेंटम और टेंजेंशियल वेलोसिटी ऑफ द फ्लूइड विल डेवलप द टॉर्क टू द विल गिव राइज टू will give the torque to the rotor blades and once the torque is developed there will be rotation in the rotor or rotation in the shaft all right so v1 v is having two components one is called as overload tangential component so this is the tangential component tangential component is the component in the direction of blade motion this is the direction of blade motion i told you so this is v w1 v w1 is the tangential component of absolute velocity of the fluid right another component is known as flow component vf what is vf the normal component to vw is vf this is vf1 these are the two components of v1 v1 is having two perpendicular components one is whirl component another is flow component ab aap tajub karenge you must be having a thought if the whirl component is responsible for developing power then why not v1 is tangential only why the v1 is at some angle because it is only vw1 which develop power and the turbine is known for producing power then why we are having v1 to be at some angle with the tangential tangential direction or the direction of the blade motion what is the use of vf1 once the power is developed once the momentum is transferred the fluid must leave the blade immediately for clearing the blade for discharge of water from the blade this flow component is important vf is responsible for discharge or clearing the blade vf will be responsible for discharge at inlet it is vf1 at outlet it is vf2 so we can say the absolute velocity is nothing but the resultant of vw and vf absolute velocity is the resultant of vw and vf and we can say v square is equal to vw square plus vf square from the right angle triangle hypotenuse square is equal to base square plus height square that is the relation between we can find out the magnitude of any any of these velocity and we can find out the direction also because v is the resultant of vw and vf if vw is like this and vf is like this then their resultant will be then their resultant will be v these are vectors the resultant will be v at inlet we will replace or we will put suffix as 1 1 1 for outlet we will put suffix as 2 2 2 then comes the relative velocity of the fluid when you are sitting on the blade when you sit on the blade when you are sitting on the rotor blade then you will observe the relative velocity of the fluid when you are sitting on the ground you will observe the absolute velocity of the fluid when you are sitting on the rotor blades then you will observe the relative velocity of the fluid at inlet it is vr1 and at outlet it is vr2 the relative velocity of the fluid is nothing but the tangent to rotor blade because the rotor blade is rotating if you draw a tangent to the rotor blade if you draw tangent to the rotor blade then you get vr1 because it is point 1 similarly if you draw tangent to the rotor blade like this then this will be vr2 because this is point 2 so the tangent to the rotor blade will give rise to the uh, the relative velocity of the fluid the tangent to the stator blades will give the absolute velocity there is a difference look absolute velocity will be like this tangent to the stator blade will be absolute velocity tangent to the rotor blade will be relative velocity they are having different directions they will be having different direction and according to concept of relative velocity we can say absolute velocity of the fluid is the resultant of relative velocity and the blade velocity that is very very important that is how by using this relationship we can draw the velocity triangle 
the velocity triangle can be drawn by using this velocity this relationship the absolute velocity of the fluid the velocity of the fluid with respect to ground is the resultant of the relative velocity of the fluid that is the relative velocity is with respect to rotor blade the velocity of the fluid with respect to the rotor blade is called as the relative velocity plus the tangential velocity of the blade so at inlet we will write v1 is equal to vw sorry vr1 at inlet we will write vr1 plus u1 and at outlet we will write v2 is equal to vr2 plus u2 so these are the three major velocity absolute velocity of the fluid relative velocity of the fluid and the tangential velocity of the blade then we will discuss two angles also the rotor blade angles and the guide vane angles or stator blade angle the rotor blade angle try to understand this the rotor blade angle this is the direction of blade motion u is the direction of the blade motion at inlet this angle is beta 1 beta is the rotor blade angle this angle is beta 2 beta 1 and beta 2 are the angle of the rotor blade at inlet and outlet respectively beta 1 and beta 2 now what is beta 1 try to understand if we draw if we draw tangent to the rotor blade we get relative velocity if we draw tangent to the if we draw tangent to the rotor blade we get the relative velocity v r 1 so beta 1 is the angle made by the relative velocity with the direction of blade motion isn't it so the rotor blade angle is the angle which is made by the relative velocity v r with the direction of the blade motion similarly similarly if we talk about guide vane angle alpha this angle is alpha 1 this angle is alpha 2 alpha 2 guide vane angle what are guide vane angles try to understand alpha 1 and alpha 2 are the guide vane angles now how to find out alpha 1 because if we draw a tangent because if we draw a tangent to the guide vane we get the absolute velocity this is the tangent tangent to the guide vane is absolute velocity v1 so it is the angle made by the angle made by the absolute velocity with the direction of blade motion this angle is alpha 1 alpha is the angle made by the absolute velocity with the direction of blade motion the guide vane angle is the angle made by the absolute velocity with the direction of blade motion the beta is the angle or the rotor blade angle is the angle which is made by the relative velocity with the direction of blade motion i hope this is clear so these are the various notations we are going to use in drawing the velocity triangle and in our further analysis if anybody is having any doubt you can just let me know otherwise please give me thumbs up if you are clear with the notation part everyone please give me thumbs up any doubt Chaliye, let us continue further first of all we will draw the inlet velocity triangle for the turbine i am going to draw the velocity triangle for a turbine inlet velocity triangle for the turbine this is the rotor blade angle this is the guide vane angle inlet velocity triangle can be of three types alpha 1 is fixed alpha 1 is fixed and beta 1 can be less than equal to greater than 90 degree there are three possibilities for beta 1 it can be less than equal to greater than 90 degree and based on these three possibilities there will be three type of inlet velocity triangle which will be drawn at point 1 which will be drawn at point 1 all right so first of all let us talk about the situation when beta 1 is less than 90 degree when beta 1 is less than 90 degree because of rotation of the blade clockwise clockwise rotation of the blade the direction of u1 is towards right hand side this is the direction of u1 and if we extend 
if we extend the rotor blade tangentially at point 1 then we will get vr1 this is vr1 so this u1 can be placed here as well this is u1 any vector can be taken anywhere in space provided this orientation and the magnitude remain same so u1 plus vr1 the resultant will be v1 this is v1 this is how the triangle will be drawn or we can draw the triangle to be like this as well it can be drawn like this also this is also correct vr1 plus u1 the resultant is v1 or we can draw this triangle both are correct so what is v1 if you see if you extend the guide vane tangentially if you extend the guide vane tangentially you get the direction of absolute velocity this angle was alpha 1 so this angle is alpha 1 alpha 1 is the angle made by the absolute velocity with the direction of blade motion and this angle is beta 1 so we can call this angle to be this angle is beta 1 this angle is beta 1 which is less than 90 degree beta 1 is less than 90 degree for beta 1 variable vr1 will be having three options vr1 will have three options based on beta 1 if beta 1 is less than 90 degree then vr1 will be like this and if you resolve v1 into two components absolute velocity is having further components the vertical component is vf1 and the horizontal component is vw1 this is vw1 here v1 is resolved into two components vf1 and vw1 they are perpendicular to each other so if beta 1 is less than 90 degree we can say implies u1 will be less than vw1 isn't it if beta 1 is less than 90 degree u1 will be less than vw1 u1 will be less than vw1 u1 is up to this point yeah. once the triangle is drawn correctly then all the trigonometric relations and geometric relations are applicable to this triangle for an example if i ask you what is vf1 vf1 will be equal to v1 sin alpha 1 what is vw1 you will say v1 cos alpha 1 isn't it v1 sin alpha 1 is vf1 v1 cos alpha 1 is vw1 or we can say tan alpha 1 is equal to perpendicular upon base vf1 by vw1 what is this 10 beta 1 what is 10 beta 1 10 beta 1 you can write this is 90 degree so 10 beta 1 is equal to perpendicular upon base vf1 upon vw1 minus u1 or we can use the Pythagoras theorem also for the right angle triangle. So, all the trigonometric relationship are valid. Right? Is this clear? Anybody is having any doubt? Now, the second possibility will be when v when beta 1 is equal to 90 degree. So, when beta 1 is equal to 90 degree, this vr1 will be vertical. This vr1 will be vertical. Then only the angle will be 90 degree this is the angle beta 1 is outside the triangle alpha 1 is inside the triangle this is the triangle we are talking about this is the triangle we are talking about alpha 1 is which is fixed alpha 1 is fixed which is inside the triangle and beta 1 which is variable which is having three options will be outside the triangle second possibility is when beta 1 is equal to 90 degree try to understand this is vr1 vr1 will be vertical for beta 1 is equal to 90 degree this will be u1 u1 and the resultant will be v1 this angle will be alpha 1 which is fixed the value of alpha 1 is around 10 degree to 30 degree that is fixed for inlet velocity triangle and the angle beta 1 is this angle this is the direction of blade motion this angle is beta 1 which is equal to 90 degree if we draw the blade the blade are like this 
द रोटर ब्लेड विल बी लाइक दिस टेंजेंट टू द रोटर ब्लेड इज वी आर वन एंड द गाइड वेन विल बी लाइक दिस गाइड वेन विल बी लाइक दिस टेंजेंट टू द गाइड वेन विल बी वी वन इफ वी रिजोल्व वी वन इंटू टू कॉम्पोनेंट देन वी कैन से इफ वी रिजोल्व वी वन इंटू टू कॉम्पोनेंट वी वन विल बी हैविंग टू कॉम्पोनेंट वन इज वी एफ वन सेम एज वी आर वन एंड दिस इज वी डब्ल्यू वन so if beta 1 is equal to 90 degree we can say u1 is equal to vw1 or we can say the blade is the radial at an inlet this is angle beta 1 that is 90 degree this is the rotation of the blade so if beta 1 is equal to 90 degree we can say radial blade at inlet the blade is radial which which blade is radial the rotor blade is radial at inlet rotor blade is radial at inlet and we can say vr1 is equal to vf1 so from here we can say v1 square is either vw1 square plus vf1 square or we can call it as u1 square plus vr1 square pythagoras theorem or tan alpha 1 can be calculated as tan alpha 1 is equal to vf1 by vw1 or we can write it as vr1 upon u1 Ten alpha one. Clear? Can you draw the third possibility when beta one is greater than ninety degree? So it is V R one which will be having three options because of beta one. Beta one is related to V R one. Three options for beta one implies three options for V R one. So if we draw the velocity triangle, this will be V R one. and the direction of blade motion is u1 this is u1 and the resultant of these two will be v1 this is v1 if we draw the blade rotor blade is something like this clockwise rotation this angle is beta1 which is greater than 90 degree or we can call this angle to be beta1 beta1 is outside the triangle this angle is alpha1 this is the guide vein guide vein will be like this this is guide vein actually this angle is alpha 1 so we can show it here and if we resolve v1 into two components if we resolve v1 into two components this will be vf1 and vw1 will be up to this only when beta 1 is greater than 90 degree do you agree u1 will be greater than vw1 u1 will be up to this so we can say implies u1 is greater than vw1 u1 will be greater than vw1 from here we can write the trigonometric and geometric relationship as well that is for beta 1 greater than 90 degree similarly for outlet velocity triangle for turbine similarly exit velocity triangle for exit velocity triangle beta 2 is fixed when beta 2 is fixed it means vr2 is fixed vr2 is fixed and alpha 2 is having three options and when alpha 2 is having three options v2 is having three options so based on alpha 2 there will be three well exit velocity triangle first possibility can be alpha 2 greater than 90 degree this is the guide vein this is the rotor blade this is point 2 this is point 2 now if we extend the rotor blade tangentially then we get vr2 and the rotation is clockwise so u2 will be having the direction to be right hand side it is u2 u2 will also have the direction right hand side this u2 can be shown here and the resultant of these two will be the absolute velocity v2 v2 is tangent to the guide vein this is the guide vein v2 is the tangent to the guide vein vr2 is the tangent to the rotor blade 
So this is how the triangle will be drawn. This angle was beta 2, isn't it? So this angle can be shown here. The angle which is fixed is inside the triangle beta 2 and this angle was alpha 2. And if we extend this, this is the direction of blade motion. So this angle is alpha 2 which is greater than 90 degree. Alpha 2 is greater than 90 degree. Now, yes. Now, V2 can be, V2 can have further two components. One is Vf2 and another is Vw2. Vw2 is this much, which is in the direction of blade motion. This is the direction of blade motion. Vr2, U2, resultant is V2. V2 is having two components. It is the absolute velocity which can be resolved into two components. Vertical component and the tangential component, Vw2. Now, for from here we can say, if alpha 2 is greater than 90 degree, if alpha 2 is greater than 90 degree, then we can say, U2 is greater than, this is U2. U2 is greater than Vr2 cos beta 2. This is Vr2 cos beta 2. We can say U2 is greater than Vr2 cos beta 2. Or we can say, Vw2 is in the direction of blade motion. Bl the direction of blade motion is taken as positive. So, Vw2 is in the direction of blade motion. Or we can say Vw2 is positive. Vw2 is positive. The direction of blade motion. The second possibility is when alpha 2 is equal to 90 degree, then it will be V2 which will be having different direction. For alpha 2 equal to 90 degree, V2 will be vertical, isn't it? When alpha 2 is equal to 90 degree, so Vr2 is still having the fixed direction Vr2, U2 is having the fixed direction that is the direction of blade motion, right hand side and the resultant will be V2, this will be V2 this will be V2, isn't it? This angle is alpha 2 which is 90 degree, this is the direction of blade motion, direction of blade motion, this angle is beta 2, angle beta 2. So, from here we can say, if we resolve V2 into two components, what is Vw2? Can you let me know what is the value of Vw2? If we resolve into two components, what is Vw2? What is Vw2? Because V2 is vertical, that is equal to Vf2 and Vw2 is equal to 0. Vw2 will be equal to 0, isn't it? So, when alpha 2 is equal to 90 degree, we can say U2 is equal to Vr2 cos beta 2. U2 is equal to Vr2 cos beta 2. Vr2 cos of beta 2, right? Or we can say Vw2 is equal to 0. The fluid is discharged without whirl. The fluid is discharged without whirl. Or we can say the radial discharge. When the fluid is discharged without whirl, we can call it as radial discharge at outlet. The radial discharge at outlet. So, this is the common case of, this will be the common case of reaction turbine. For mechanical engineers, these, uh, these velocity triangles are going to be important for uh, steam turbines also, for power plant engineering also. This is the common case of reaction turbine. We can write 10 beta 2, we can write all the trigonometric and geometric relationship, 10 beta 2 is perpendicular that is V2 upon uh, base that is U2 or we can write it as Vf2 upon U2, 
और वी आर टू कॉस बीटा टू वी एफ टू अपॉन वी आर टू कॉस बीटा टू और वी कैन से वी आर टू स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू वी टू स्क्वायर प्लस यू टू स्क्वायर वी आर टू स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू वी टू स्क्वायर प्लस यू टू स्क्वायर नाउ वन मोर पॉसिबिलिटी वेन एल्फा टू इज लेस देन नाइंटी डिग्री द थर्ड पॉसिबिलिटी वेन एल्फा टू इज लेस देन नाइंटी डिग्री सो वी टू विल बी हैविंग डिफरेंट डायरेक्शन वी आर टू इज स्टिल फिक्सड दिस इज वी आर टू द डायरेक्शन ऑफ यू टू इज ऑल्सो फिक्सड नाउ वी टू विल बी लाइक दिस This angle is beta two. Fixed angle is inside the triangle. The variable angle is outside the triangle. This is alpha two, which is less than ninety degree. Now resolve V two into two components. The perpendicular is V F two, and V W two will be this, which is opposite to the direction of blade motion. Blade motion is. Taken as positive direction, so V W two is negative. When alpha two is less than ninety degree, V W two is negative, isn't it? And from here we can say U two is less than U two is up this much only. U two is less than V R two cos beta two. When alpha two is less than ninety degree, we can say U two is less than V R two cos of beta two. Or we can say, or what we can say, V W two is in opposite direction. ब्लेड मोशन वी डब्ल्यू टू इज इन अपोजिट डायरेक्शन ऑफ ब्लेड मोशन और वी कैन से वी डब्ल्यू टू इज नेगेटिव सो दीज आर द्री एक्सिट वेलोसिटी ट्राइंगल आर यू एबल टू सी दीज दिस इज वी टू दिस इज वी एफ टू सो बेस्ड ऑन एल्फा टू देर आर थ्री पॉसिबिलिटी फॉर एक्सिट वेलोसिटी ट्राइंगल एंड Based on beta, uh, based on beta one, there will be three inlet possibility for inlet velocity triangles. So, if I summarize this, look, for turbine, if I summarize, alpha one is fixed, beta one can be less than equal to greater than ninety degree, or we can say u one less than equal to greater than v w one. these are the three possibilities beta 1 means we are one is having three options we are one will be having three options so if i draw look u1 is like this and v1 is like this v1 is fixed this is alpha 1 and based on beta 1 there can be three possibility if this is vr1 then beta 1 is less than 90 degree if this is vr1 then beta 1 is equal to 90 degree and this is vr1 then beta 1 is greater than 90 degree beta 1 greater than 90 degree this is how three velocity triangle can be drawn this is v1 and v1 can be resolved into two components vf1 and this is always vf1 and then vw1 can be this much this is always vw1 but u1 sometimes u1 will be up to this sometimes u1 will be up to this sometimes u1 will be up to this so this is how three inlet velocity triangle can be drawn for turbine for exit velocity triangle beta2 is fixed it means vr2 is fixed the direction of vr2 is fixed beta is related with relative velocity alpha is related with absolute velocity and alpha2 can be having three options less than equal to greater than 90 degree then we can say u2 can be less than equal to greater than vr2 cos beta2 or we can say vw2 is having three options less than equal to greater than 0 it means alpha 2 having three options so v2 is having three options if we draw the velocity triangle this is u2 and 
this is vr2 because beta2 is fixed now based on alpha2 there is three there are three possibilities v2 can be like this if v2 is like this then alpha2 is less than 90 degree v2 can be vertical then alpha2 is equal to 90 degree and v2 can be like this then alpha2 is greater than 90 degree isn't it and this is equal to vf2 and vw2 sometimes it will be like this so vw2 is negative sometimes it will be like this then vw2 is positive and if v2 is vertical which is a common case of reaction turbine then vw2 will be zero so these are the three possibilities for good morning free education mission bn pal welcome welcome to the session is this clear or not are these velocity triangles clear or not do let me know one angle is inside the triangle which is fixed another angle is outside the triangle which is variable similarly one angle is fixed another angle is variable there are three options alpha 2 less than 90 degree equal to 90 degree greater than 90 degree I hope this is clear to everyone. Anybody is having any doubt, you can just let me know. Otherwise, give me thumbs up if it is clear. Now, sometimes what happen is, sometimes what happen is, the information is not directly provided to you. The information is not directly provided to you. It is provided in the puzzle form. The information for drawing the velocity triangles. For an example, some of the information. Let us decode this information. Agar question ne bola hai, the blade is radial. What do you understand by this? Everyone, please do let me know. If the question asks you to draw a velocity triangle for radial blade, Vijay, do you want me to take the compressible flow? First of all, focus on the fluid mechan fluid machinery, hydraulic machine. Then we will plan some session for compressible flow as well. If, if more people demand, then definitely we will have. Radial blade ka matlab hai, beta is equal to 90 degree. Beta is equal to 90 degree. And when beta is 90 degree, it means VR is vertical. VR is normal. What is normal? Normal to the direction of blade motion. Do you agree? When blade is given radial blade, if nothing is mentioned, it is the rotor blade. Always, if nothing is mentioned about the blade, it is assumed to be the rotor blade, not the stator blade. So, radial blade means beta is equal to 90 degree Vijay, right? Now, if the question says the radial discharge, what do you understand by the radial discharge? What do, you, what do you understand by the radial discharge? Tell me everyone. What is the meaning of radial discharge? Radial discharge means absolute velocity is normal to the blade motion. Radial discharge means alpha is equal to 90 degree or we can say Vw is equal to 0. That is the meaning of radial discharge. Whirl component will be 0, alpha is 90 degree. If the question asks you to draw the velocity triangle for radial discharge, yes, V is equal to Vf. That is the meaning of radial discharge. The absolute velocity will be the normal to the blade motion. Radial blade means the relative velocity will be drawn normal to the blade motion. When the question says symmetrical blades, if the question says the blades are symmetrical, what do you understand by this? Symmetrical blade, bataye quickly. When nothing is mentioned regarding the blade, it is assumed to be the rotor blade. When the blades are symmetrical, what does that mean? It means the blade angle at inlet will be same as the blade angle at outlet. Beta 1 is equal to beta 2, that is same. Beta is same at inlet and outlet. 
नहीं विजय सिमेट्रिकल ब्लेड मीन्स द ब्लेड एंगल इज सेम एट इनलेट एंड आउटलेट वट डू यू अंडरस्टैंड बाई द फ्रिक्शन लेस ब्लेड इफ इट इज गिवन एज फ्रिक्शन लेस ब्लेड इफ द ब्लेड आर फ्रिक्शन लेस बिकॉज द फ्लूड इज ट्रेवलिंग ओवर द ब्लेड विद द रिलेटिव वेलोसिटी एंड द फ्रिक्शन इज जीरो फॉर द फॉर द ब्लेड देन द मैग्निट्यूड ऑफ वी आर वन विल बी सेम एज मैग्निट्यूड ऑफ वी आर टू इट इज ड्यू टू फ्रिक्शन there is energy loss there is a difference in the relative velocity if the blade are frictionless or if we can say ideal flow over the blade if the flow is ideal over the blade one and the same thing when the blades are frictionless the flow is ideal for ideal flow over the blade the uh, the magnitude of relative velocity at inlet and outlet will be same you need to understand when the question says the flow is tangential or axial try to understand this is how the axial flow looks like this is axial flow when the flow is parallel to the axis of the shaft when the flow is parallel to the axis of the shaft this is called as axial flow so this is point 1 this is point 2 point 1 is the inlet point where the fluid enters the blade and point 2 is that point where the fluid leaves the blade do you agree that for axial flow r1 is equal to r2 do you agree for for axial flow r1 and r2 are equal r1 and r2 are the radial distance of point 1 and point 2 from the axis of the rotation from the axis of the shaft so when the flow is axial u1 will be equal to u2 u is equal to r into omega omega is the angular velocity and r is the radial distance of point 1 and point 2 respectively this is called as tangential flow here the flow is tangential whenever the flow is tangential then also point 1 where the fluid strike point 2 where the fluid leaves point 1 and point 2 are at the same radial distance from the axis this is the axis of the shaft this is the axis of the shaft so whenever the flow is axial or tangential we can say r1 will be equal to r2 and when r1 is equal to r2 then we can say u1 is equal to u2 the blade speed at inlet and outlet will be same very nice the blade speed at inlet and outlet will be same but when the flow is the radial look this is the radial flow here the fluid is flowing in radial direction like this here the fluid is flowing in radial radially inward it can be radial inward or radial outward if the fluid is flowing like this towards the center of the shaft then we can say this is point 1 and this is point 2 so we can say r1 cannot be equal to r2 for radial flow r1 cannot be equal to r2 so we can say u1 cannot be equal to u2 when the flow is radial u1 and u2 cannot be equal because r1 cannot be equal to r2 so these are some of the information which are provided in the question accordingly we need to draw the velocity triangle accordingly we need to decode these expressions all right is this all fine with everyone this is radial flow the flow is radial that is inward it is radially inward flow so whenever the flow is radial the the blade velocity will not have same magnitude at inlet and outlet they will be different the direction will be same the direction for u1 and u2 will be same whether the flow is axial tangential or radial but the magnitude will not be equal and for axial and tangential flow for the flow to be axial or tangential we can say u1 is equal to u2 is equal to u we can draw the combined velocity triangle we can call it as the single when the both the triangles are drawn in the same figure that is known as combined velocity triangle which can be drawn for axial and tangential flow only u is the blade velocity u is the blade velocity this is the direction of u and this will be vr1 
and the resultant is V1. U1 plus VR1, the resultant is V1, that is the inlet velocity triangle. Inside angle is alpha 1, outside angle is beta 1. Alpha 1 and beta 1. So, this is the inlet velocity triangle. When beta 1 is less than 90 degree. V1 can be resolved into two components. Vertical component is Vf1 and the horizontal component, this will be Vw1 up to this point. This is Vw1. So, u for beta 1 less than 90 degree, u is less than Vw1. u is less than Vw1, isn't it? Now, the exit velocity triangle. Similarly, the exit velocity triangle, this is again u2 u2 plus vr2 like this and this the resultant will be v2 this is v2 inside angle is beta 2 outside angle is alpha 2 here alpha 2 is less than 90 degree when alpha 2 is less than 90 degree this is the direction of blade motion we can call this direction to be the direction of blade motion which is taken as positive Blade, direction of blade motion is taken as positive. So, if we resolve V2 into two components, Vf2 is vertical, Vf2 and Vw2 is this, which is negative. Vw2 will be negative when alpha2 is less than 90 degree, isn't it? Or we can say when alpha2 is less than 90 degree, U is less than Vr2 cos beta2. This much is Vr2 cos beta2 up to this. You can call it as Vr2 cos beta2. So, u is less than v r2 cos beta 2. So, this is how combined velocity triangle can be drawn for triangle. Are you comfortable with the velocity triangles? If anybody is having anything to ask, you just let me know. Similarly, we can draw the velocity triangle for pump also. Similarly, for pump also. Look, the inlet velocity triangle for a turbine, look, if we talk about a turbine, inlet for turbine will be equal to outlet for the pump. For inlet turbine, alpha 1 is fixed, beta 1 can be less than equal to greater than 90 degree, that is for turbine. And based on beta 1, we can say u1 less than equal to greater than Vw1, isn't it? Or we can say Vr1 having three options. So, that will be same as, that will be similar to outlet velocity triangle for the pump. That will be similar to outlet velocity triangle for the pump. So, for outlet velocity triangle for the pump, alpha 2 is fixed, beta 2 will be having three options greater than 90 degree or from here we can say u2 can be greater than equal to less than vw2. Here vr2 is having three options and here v2 is fixed, the direction of v2 is fixed. Similarly, the outlet velocity triangle of the turbine, we can say beta 2 is fixed and alpha 2 less than equal to greater than 90 degree or we can say u2 less than equal to greater than vr2 cos beta 2 or we can say vw2 can be negative, can be positive. So, the outlet velocity triangle for the turbine is equal to inlet velocity triangle for the pump. For the centrifugal pump, B when beta 2 is fixed, we can say beta 1 is fixed and alpha 2, alpha 1 can have three options less than equal to greater than 90 degree. So, u1 less than or u1 will be greater than equal to less than vr1 cos beta1 
or we can say v w one can be greater than equal to less than zero. When beta one is fixed, v r one is fixed, and here from this v one is having three options. I hope you guys are understanding this. V one is having three options. V one will be having three options. So inlet velocity triangle of the turbine will be similar to the exit velocity triangle for the pump, centrifugal pump. Outlet velocity triangle for the turbine is sim sim same as the inlet velocity triangle for the pump. So if we draw the velocity triangle for the pump, for inlet V R one is fixed. And V one is having three options. For exit velocity triangle for the centrifugal pump, V two is fixed and V R two will be having three options. So if we draw the triangle, will be like this. U is having the direction positive x. This is V R one, which is fixed, and this is U one. This is U one, and V one is having three options. V one can be sorry. Look, hmm. this is V R one. This is U one, and then. V one is having three options. It can be like this. It can be vertical, and it can be like this. This angle is beta one, which is fixed, and this angle is alpha one. This angle is alpha one. This angle is alpha one. Here, both the angles are inside the triangle. So V one is having three options, and similarly, if we talk about V R two, this is V R two. U two will be like this. U two is fixed, and V two is also fixed. This is V two. So V two can have three options. V two can have three op. Uh, v R two can have three options. It can be this V R two. It can be vertical V R two, or it can be like this V R two. This angle is alpha two, which is fixed. This angle is beta two, or this angle is beta two, beta two, or this angle is beta two. When beta two is less than ninety degree, this triangle will be drawn. If V one is like this, V W one is positive, and if V one is like this, then V W two is negative. V W one is negative. And for vertical, V W one will be zero. Similarly, exit velocity triangle. This is point one. This is point two. The blades are like this. This is how the triangles can be drawn for centrifugal pump. Are you able to understand? If you see, for inlet velocity triangle for the centrifugal pump, beta one is fixed, so V R one is fixed. And V one is having three options. You can see here, V one is having three options. V R one is fixed, beta one is fixed, and V one is having three options. This one or this one or this one, based on alpha one less than ninety equal to ninety greater than ninety degree. So we can say if alpha one is less than ninety degree, then V W one is positive. If alpha one is less than ninety degree, then V W one is positive. Isn't it? Or we can say u1 is greater than vr1 cos beta1. u1 is greater than for alpha1 less than 90 degree. This will be u1, and vr1 cos beta1 is this much. So u1 is greater than vr1 for alpha2. Alpha1 is equal to 90 degree. vw1 is equal to zero. And we can say u1 is equal to v r1 cos beta1. When alpha1 greater than 90 degree, then v w1 is negative, or we can say u1 is less than v r1 cos beta1.
that is for pump similarly for exit velocity triangle it is beta 2 when beta 2 less than 90 degree then u2 is greater than vw2 when beta 2 is less than 90 degree then u2 u2 will be this much u2 is greater than vw2 vw2 is this this will be vw2 u2 is greater than vw2 that is called as backward vein we call it as backward vein or backward blade when beta 2 is less than 90 degree fluid is moving the rotation is clockwise the rotation of the shaft is clockwise the fluid is moving in the backward direction that is why it is called as backward angle vein when beta 2 is equal to 90 degree u2 is equal to vw2 that is called as radial vein vein means the blade when beta 2 is greater than 90 degree do you understand u2 is less than vw2 then this is called as forward vein that is how velocity triangle can be drawn for centrifugal pump anybody is having any doubt you can just let me know so that is all about the velocity triangles for centrifugal pump as well as velocity triangles for turbine can we proceed further Bataye. anybody is having anything to ask please do let me know and do not forget to join the maha marathon session for verbal ability mathematics and general aptitude on the three consecutive days 27 28th and 29th starting at 10 am on the baiju's youtube channel so ye zarur attend kariye because you must not be that comfortable with the verbal ability aptitude engineering mathematics mostly students skip this non-tech portion so it is very important to have the last moment revision for these topics to get a better score in your gate exam now let us talk about the the concept or the physics behind the hydraulic machine that is the principle of rotating machine euler energy equation euler's energy equation so the rotation of the shaft is taking place due to angular uh, due to change in ang uh, angular momentum the torque is developed due to due to rate of uh, due to change in angular momentum or due to rate of change of angular momentum so angular momentum of the fluid at inlet that is l1 is equal to m into vw1 we will use vw1 because vw is responsible for discharge v vw is responsible for power vw is responsible for power so angular momentum of the fluid at inlet is mvw1 into r1 angular momentum of the fluid at outlet will be m into vw2 into r2 mvr is the angular momentum so according to newton's second law for rotation according to newton's second law for rotation what we can say the torque developed by the fluid is equal to rate of change of angular momentum of the fluid that is l dot 1 minus l dot 2 that is the torque developed by the fluid that is the rate of change of angular momentum of the fluid initial minus final and so we can say t is equal to m dot into vw1 r1 minus vw2 r2 that is the torque developed by the fluid now the power developed is equal to torque into omega the power developed by the fluid is equal to torque into omega that is m dot into vw1 r1 minus vw2 r2 into omega if we take omega inside the bracket so omega into r1 will be equal to u1 omega into r2 is equal to u2 so the power which is developed by the turbine is equal to m dot into vw1 u1 minus vw2 r2 that is power developed by the turbine that is how we can find out the power which is developed by the turbine m dot what is mass m dot m dot is the mass flow rate that is equal to rho into q 
the power developed by the turbine is equal to m dot v w 1 u 1 minus v w 2 u 2. If we are using this equation, do not forget to, to use v w 2 with sign. Pehle bataya maine, v w 2 can be negative, v w 2 can be positive depending on alpha 2. If alpha 2 is less than equal to greater than 90 degree, then v w 2 can be less than equal to greater than 0. So, v w 2 must be used with sign. For alpha 2 less than 90 degree, v w 2 will be negative. So, these two parameters will be added. For alpha 2 is equal to 90 degree, v w 2 will become 0. For, for uh, reaction turbine, the second term will not be there. For alpha 2 greater than 90 degree, v w 2 will be positive. Then, the two terms will get subtracted. So, this is how we can find out the power developed by the turbine. That is equation number one. What is the physical significance of this Euler equation? This is this equation is called as Euler's energy equation for the rotating machine. Let us find out the physical significance. Exit velocity triangle bana raho main yahan pe point two hai. Let us say this is V R two, this is U two, and the resultant is V two. Angle beta two cons fixed. Alpha 2 greater than 90 degree ले रहा हूँ जिससे जिससे V W 2 positive हो U 2 इतना है and V W 2 we can have two components of V 2 this is V F 2 and this is V W 2 which is positive this V F 2 can be written from this triangle also from written from this triangle also दोनों right angle triangle से let us write V F 2 square from here v f 2 square is equal to v 2 square minus v w 2 square or we can write it as v r 2 square minus minus this that is v w 2 uh, sorry u 2 minus v w 2 square isko further simplify kar lije v r 2 square minus u 2 square minus v w 2 square plus 2 v w 2 u 2 hoga ki nahi that is equal to v 2 square minus v w 2 square this v w 2 square getting cancel out so if we find out this term v w 2 into u 2 what is v w 2 into u 2 kya hoga v 2 square minus or plus u 2 square minus v r 2 square by 2 and similarly, similarly, we can write V W 1 U 1 as V 1 square plus U 1 square minus V R 1 square by 2. Put in equation number 1. If we put in Euler equation, V W 1 U 1, V W 2 U 2, if we put the values in Euler equation, then we get the power developed by the turbine which is equal to m dot into v w 1 u 1 minus v w 2 u 2 can be written as m dot into we can write v 1 square minus v 2 square by 2 plus u 1 square minus u 2 square by 2 plus v r 2 square minus v r 1 square by 2. Yoga. This is the power developed by the turbine. V W two must be used with sign. This is the power developed by turbine. What is the physical significance? Try to understand this. V W two can be negative, can be positive, can be zero even. So, whenever a turbine or a pump is taken there is no change in potential energy across the turbine or the pump across the turbine or the pump there is no change in potential energy at all there will be no change in the potential energy because the the height of point 1 and point 2 are same so it is the pressure energy and kinetic energy which are going to change across the turbine. So, the first term represents the first term represents impulse effect. The first term represents the impulse effect.
वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ इम्पल्स इफेक्ट ड्यू टू एब्सोल्यूट वेलोसिटी द इफेक्ट प्रोड्यूस ड्यू टू एब्सोल्यूट वेलोसिटी ऑफ द फ्लू और ड्यू टू चेंज इन काइनेटिक एनर्जी दिस इज द चेंज इन काइनेटिक एनर्जी ऑफ द फ्लू चेंज इन काइनेटिक एनर्जी ऑफ द फ्लू गिव राइज टू इंपल्स इफेक्ट देन द सेकेंड टर्म रिप्रेजेंट द सेंट्रीफ्यूगल इफेक्ट द सेकेंड टर्म इज कॉल्ड एज सेंट्रीफ्यूगल इफेक्ट ड्यू टू रोटेशन ड्यू टू रोटेशन ऑफ द ब्लेड ड्यू टू चेंज इन फ्लूड ब्लेड वेलोसिटी दैट इज कॉल्ड एज सेंट्रीफिकल इफेक्ट एंड द थर्ड वन रिप्रेजेंट द थर्ड रिप्रेजेंट द रिएक्शन इफेक्ट द थर्ड टर्म रिप्रेजेंट द रिएक्शन इफेक्ट अकॉर्डिंग टू बर्नोली प्रिंसिपल Bernoulli principle. When the pressure decreases, the relative velocity increases. So the change in relative velocity of the fluid gives rise to the reaction effect. There are three types of effects which the hydraulic machine produce. One is impulse, centrifugal, and the reaction effect. So the change in kinetic energy implies the first term. First term represents the change in kinetic energy of the fluid. First term represents the change in kinetic energy of the fluid, or we can call it as dynamic pressure change for the fluid. Change for the fluid. The sum of second and third term represents the pressure energy change for the fluid. The sum of second and third term represents the pressure energy change of the fluid. Due to pressure energy change, there is a change in the centrifugal effect and the reaction effect. Centrifugal effect and reaction. If effect give rise to change in pressure energy of the fluid or we can call it as change in static pressure there is no change in the potential energy so the first term represents the kinetic energy change the sum of second and third term represents the pressure energy change of the fluid or we can call it as the static pressure change of the fluid so the total energy change of the fluid across the turbine is nothing but the power which is developed by the turbine that is the physical significance of euler equation so there are three effects impulse effect centrifugal effect and the reaction effect react why do we call it as reaction effect because the relative velocity reacts due to change in pressure of the fluid according to bernoulli principle so these are the three effects which are obtained due to across the turbine similarly for the pump also we can write for pump power given to the pump we can say power is given by m dot we can write v w2 into u2 minus v w1 into u1 that can be extended as we can expand m dot first one is sent uh, impulse effect v2 square minus v1 square by 2 then u2 square minus u1 square by 2 uh, in uh, centrifugal effect then v r1 square minus v r2 square by 2 that is called as reaction effect for the pump we can write 2 minus 1 that is for the pump so kisi bhi hydraulic machine ke liye there is a term defined which is called as a degree of reaction for any hydraulic machine there is a term which is called degree of reaction please guys do like this session so that the session reaches to all the mechanical or civil engineering aspirants who are going to appear for gate 2023 exam the power power given to the pump can be obtained by these three effects impulse effect centrifugal effect and the reaction effect what is the degree of reaction how do we define the degree of reaction can you let me know what is the definition for degree of reaction of a turbine degree of reaction degree of reaction is the ratio of look degree of reaction is the ratio of static pressure change for the fluid across the hydraulic machine to the total energy change the ratio of pressure energy change to the total energy change across the hydraulic machine is called as degree of reaction important concept 
how do we define the degree of reaction the ratio of pressure energy change to the total energy change inside the rotor of a turbo machine or we can call it as the ratio of static pressure change to the total pressure change means static plus dynamic inside the rotor so the degree of reaction the formula for degree of reaction can be written as the first term is u1 square minus u2 square by 2 that is centrifugal effect plus vr2 square minus vr1 square by 2 divide by vw1 u1 minus vw2 u2 isn't it that is the total energy change or we can call it as 1 minus v1 square minus v2 square by 2 into vw1 u1 minus vw2 u2 that is the expression for degree of reaction that is the expression for degree of reaction what is the minimum value of degree of reaction for any hydraulic machine what can be the minimum value of degree of reaction for any hydraulic machine do let me know what can be the minimum degree of reaction tell me the minimum value of degree of reaction for any hydraulic machine the degree of reaction can lie between 0 and 1 the degree of reaction can lie between 0 and 1 minimum is 0 maximum is 1 when there is no contribution of pressure energy then the degree of reaction for that hydraulic machine will be 0 when the only the pressure energy change give rise to power or the power is developed only because of the pressure energy change the degree of reaction for that particular hydraulic machine is 1. So, the contribution of pressure the relative contribution of pressure energy decide the degree of reaction if the if the if only the pressure energy contributes to the power change or power developed then it is 1 and if there is no change in pressure or the pressure energy change is 0 then the degree of reaction for that particular hydraulic machine will be 0. So, that is how we can define the degree of reaction. There is a question on the screen. Please try to solve this question regarding the degree of reaction. The combined velocity triangle is given. It is the combined velocity triangle given u1 is equal to u2. The notations are v is the absolute velocity of the fluid with respect to ground. w is the relative velocity of the fluid. We use vr as the relative velocity u is the blade velocity, 1 is for inlet, 2 is for outlet. If v2 is equal to w1 or vr1 and v1 is equal to w2 that is vr2, then what is the degree of reaction? This is the combined velocity triangle. So, can we write the degree of reaction to be like this? The numerator is u1 square minus u2 square by 2 first term plus vr2 square minus v r 1 square by 2 that is centrifugal effect plus imp, uh, the centrifugal effect plus reaction effect is the total pressure energy change divided by v 1 square minus v 2 square by 2 that is the impulse effect plus u 1 square minus u 2 square by 2 that is centrifugal effect plus v r 2 square minus v r 1 square by 2 that is the reaction effect denominator is the total energy change numerator is the pressure energy change this is how the degree of reaction can be defined what is the answer to this what will be the answer to this degree of reaction for the given condition because it is a combined velocity triangle so u1 is equal to u2 u1 and u2 are equal because u1 and u2 are equal So, this term will become 0, this term will become 0. Now, V R 2, this is V R 2. V R 2 can be replaced by V 1 and V R 1 can be replaced by V 2. Then what will happen? When V R 2 is replaced by or 
we can replace v1 with look this is vr2 this is vr1 if we replace v1 and v2 v1 is replaced by v1 is replaced by vr2 and v2 is replaced by vr1 according to the given condition so if you see whatever the bracket is there on the numerator it is same in the denominator but twice so what is the degree of reaction what will be the degree of reaction you are not able to hear me navet awaaz nahi aa rahi kya meri hello hello am i audible please do let me know can you guys hear me or not am i audible and audible or not bataiye awaaz aa rahi hai everyone please do respond answer will be 0.5 kya aap log mujhe sun pa rahe hain i am waiting for your response it will be 1 by 2 or 0.5 awaaz aa rahi hai kya meri please do let me know sometimes the theoretical question can also be asked from the degree of reaction or from the examples of various turbine these are some of the example simple rotor impulse turbine example is delaval simple rotor impulse turbine the example is delaval velocity compounded impulse turbine the example is curtis curtis turbine is example of impulse turbine where the velocity is compounded similarly pressure compounded impulse turbine the example is rate u when the reaction is 0.5 the example is parsons turbine for 100% reaction turbine it is hero's turbine for impulse turbine what is the degree of reaction for impulse turbine degree of reaction will be zero if somebody ask you which one of them is example of zero degree of reaction so the impulse turbine are having zero degree of reaction and 50% reaction turbine is parson 100% reaction turbine example is hero's turbine now some more theoretical discussion regarding the classification of the various turbine let us have the discussion for turbine classification there are four bases based on which turbines are classified one is based on the type of energy available at the inlet i told you there are pressure energy as well as kinetic energy which are involved in the power produced there is no involvement of pressure and uh, potential energy potential energy will remain constant potential energy will remain constant only the pressure energy and kinetic energy are involved in the power development so there is a possibility when both the pressure energy and kinetic energy are available at the inlet the example is reaction or pressure turbine reaction turbine have pressure energy and kinetic energy both available at the inlet so the total energy head available at the inlet is pressure head plus velocity head that is the net head available at the turbine inlet net 
net head available at the turbine inlet is sum of pressure head plus protein, uh, kinetic energy head. Examples are Francis, Kaplan and propeller. Why do we call them pressure turbine? Because it is the pressure energy available is pressure energy and kinetic energy but pressure energy converts into mechanical energy in in case of reaction turbine in case of reaction turbine it is the pressure energy which converts into mechanical energy and that is why it is called as pressure turbine that is why it is known as the pressure turbine examples are francis kaplan and propeller the second possibility is only kinetic energy is available at the inlet. It means pressure is constant or that is PATM. Pressure is atmospheric. If only kinetic energy is available at the inlet. So, head available is V1 square by 2G. That is the net or effective head at inlet. That is the net or effective head at inlet. The turbine is impulse or velocity turbine. Why it is velocity turbine? Why we call the impulse turbine to be velocity turbine? Because it is the kinetic energy which converts into mechanical energy. Because pressure is constant and because the pressure is constant, that is why degree of reaction will be zero. Pressure is equal to PATM. Pressure remains constant PATM. And that is why degree of reaction will be zero. Examples are Pelton wheel and Turgo impulse. These are the examples of these are the examples of impulse turbine. That is the first basis of classification. The next is based on the flow direction. Please guys do like this session, don't forget to like, share and subscribe our Baiju's YouTube channel. From today evening, there will be two sessions starting on Baiju's YouTube channel. One is the most predicted question series and another is Formula 1 series. For formula revision, F1 series and for, for numerical practice, most expected type of numerical practice, uh, predicted series. So do join today in the evening for these sessions for mechanical and civil both the second basis is the flow direction if the flow is the radial example is francis the flow is radial inward the flow is radial inward so if the flow is radial u1 is not equal to u2 i have already told you this is the radial flow francis is an example of radial flow Inward radial flow turbine. Fournier own another is Fournier own. Fournier, Fournier own is the example of radially outward flow. Flow is radial outward in Fournier own. The second is axial flow turbine. Kaplan and propeller are having axial flow. U1 is equal to U2 because R1 is equal to R2. Here R1 is not equal to R2. The radial distances are not equal. And the third one is tangential flow. Example is Pelton wheel. Again for tangential flow, U1 is equal to U2. For axial and tangential flow, the blade speed will be same at inlet and outlet respectively. The third classification is based on the net head available at the inlet of the turbine. Net or effective head H. When the available head is very high, when the value of H is greater than 300 meter, it is an example of Pelton wheel turbine. In Pelton wheel turbine, H is greater than 300 meter. High head. The second is medium head available at the inlet. If H lies between 60 to 300 meter, the example is Francis. Francis turbine is an example of medium head. And the third one is low head. When H is less than 60 meter, the example is Kaplan and propeller. When the available head is less than 60 meter. So, this classification is based on the amount of energy available at the inlet. First classification was based on the type of energy. The second was based on the direction of the flow. The third classification is based on the amount of energy available at the inlet of the turbine.
all right the last classification is based on the specific speed of the turbine do you know what is the specific speed of a turbine do you know what is the specific speed of a turbine anybody is having any idea about a specific speed very very important this is one of the performance parameter specific speed is the performance parameter based on the specific speed of the turbine when the turbine is having high specific speed when ns is greater than 300 it is kaplan or propeller turbine for a specific speed to be very high that is greater than 300 the turbine is kaplan and propeller so specific speed is actually inversely proportional to h available head the one which was example of low head the one which was example of low head is an example of high specific speed isn't it similarly medium specific speed when ns lies between 60 to 300 francis it is also an example of medium head available and the third one is low specific speed when ns is less than 60 meter i have intentionally kept the numerical value similar to h they might be little different but it does not matter so it so that it will be easier for you to memorize these values high head greater than 300 medium between 60 to 300 less low head between uh, less than 60 meter similarly similarly high specific speed greater than 300 medium 60 to 300 and less uh, low specific speed less than 60 meter now you can see these are examples of reaction turbine these are reaction turbine and this is impulse turbine so the turbine which is having more specific speed the turbine which is having more specific speed is definitely be having more performance or will be having better performance more specific speed implies better performance low specific speed in, implies lesser performance so we can say if the head discharge speed and size are same then the reaction turbine develop more power the reaction turbine produces more power compared to the or they are more efficient compared to the impulse turbine because in impulse turbine a jet strikes the blade in case of impulse turbine only a jet strikes the blade but in case of reaction turbine water completely fills the turbine casing this is the reaction turbine this is the impulse turbine so reaction turbines are better in performance compared to the impulse turbine they are having better specific speed compared to the impulse turbine so that is the final classification you can remember this turbine can be of two types one is reaction another is impulse reaction turbine is also called as pressure turbine why because it is the pressure energy which is responsible for producing power impulse turbine can also be known as velocity turbine because it is the kinetic energy of the fluid which is responsible for producing power reaction turbine can be of two types it it is francis when the flow is radial francis turbine is the example of radial flow And in case of Francis turbine, U1 is not equal to U2. U1 will not be equal to U2. Another is Kaplan turbine, axial flow. The flow is axial. Here U1 is equal to U2. These are two types of reaction turbine. And impulse turbine is, example is Pelton wheel, where U1 again equal to U2 because the flow is tangential. and degree of reaction will be zero for the impulse turbine because the pressure is constant and it is the kinetic energy which is responsible for power so that is all about the various types of turbine that completes our turbine classification next is
वेरियस परफॉर्मेंस पैरामीटर्स वेरियस परफॉर्मेंस पैरामीटर्स वन इज हाइड्रोलिक पावर और द वॉटर पावर एच पी द पावर अवेलेबल एट द इनलेट ऑफ द टर्बाइन सो वी कैन कैलकुलेट हाइड्रोलिक पावर एज एम डॉट इन टू जी इन टू एच एच इज द नेट हेड अवेलेबल एट द इनलेट एम डॉट इज इक्वल टू रो इन टू क्यू डेंसिटी इन टू डिस्चार्ज एंड एच इज द नेट और इफेक्टिव हेड एट इनलेट टोटल एनर्जी हेड एट इनलेट दैट इज कॉल्ड एज हाइड्रोलिक पावर then the runner power or rotor power that is calculated from euler's equation euler equation or the velocity triangle rotor power is calculated by using the velocity triangle concept of velocity triangles the power developed by the rotor of the turbine so rotor power or runner power is equal to m dot we can write vw1 u1 minus vw2 u2 or we can expand it m dot we can write v1 square minus v2 square by 2 impulse effect u1 square minus u2 square by 2 centrifugal effect plus vr2 square minus vr1 square by 2 that is reaction effect but whenever we are using this expression vw2 should be used with sign that is important If you are not comfortable with sign, go with the expanded expression. And if you are comfortable with the sign, you can use this expression. That is the rotor power. And the shaft or the brake power is the final power which is available at the output shaft. That is the power which is obtained from the turbine. So shaft power is equal to. We can say shaft power is equal to torque into omega, or we can say rotor power minus mechanical losses. the rotor power minus mechanical losses will be shaft power t is the torque developed and omega is the angular velocity of the shaft that is how these will be obtained so we can say hydraulic power is maximum then rotor power then the shaft power and based on that we can define the efficiency the ratio of rotor power by hydraulic power is called as hydraulic efficiency hydraulic efficiency is the ratio of rotor power by hydraulic power ratio of shaft power by hydro rotor power is called as mechanical efficiency of the turbine and this ratio is called as overall efficiency overall efficiency of the turbine will be the ratio of shaft power by hydraulic power this is how we can calculate the efficiency of the turbine and if we multiply and divide with rotor power here so shaft power by rotor power is mechanical efficiency and rotor power by hydraulic power is hydraulic efficiency so we can say overall efficiency is nothing but the product of hydraulic efficiency into mechanical efficiency that is the overall efficiency of the turbine then the term defined next term defined is speed ratio phi the ratio of blade velocity to the absolute velocity of the fluid that is called as speed ratio flow ratio is defined as the ratio of flow component of velocity to the absolute velocity this is called as flow ratio psi speed ratio and flow ratio can also be defined this way clear so these are the basic analysis of a turbine basic analysis now what we will do is we will discuss about the specific speed very very important concept that is called as the specific speed of the turbine if anybody is having any doubt in any of the discussion i have done so far please do let me know pata ye kisi ko koi confusion please keep on talking to me keep on communicating with me the more you share your knowledge the more increment you the more confident you feel so if you have any doubt or if you have anything to discuss you should use the comment section so that all that motivate me also to to have the session with full dedication and with uh, i will try to make the session as simple as easy for you as possible
नेक्स्ट इज स्पेसिफिक स्पीड ऑफ ए टर्बाइन वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पोर्शन स्पेसिफिक स्पीड ऑफ ए टर्बाइन हाउ डू वी डिफाइन द स्पेसिफिक स्पीड ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस द स्पेसिफिक स्पीड ऑफ ए टर्बाइन इज द डिफाइंड एज द स्पीड ऑफ ए टर्बाइन विच इज सिमिलर इन शेप एंड जोमेट्रिकल डायमेंशन विद एक्चुअल टर्बाइन इट मीन्स वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ए मॉडल मॉडल इज हैविंग सिमिलर शेप एंड सिमिलर जोमेट्रिकल डायमेंशन विद एक्चुअल टर्बाइन बट ऑफ सच ए साइज देर इज ए जोमेट्रिकल सिमिलरिटी बट द साइज इज सच दैट इट मस्ट डेवलप यूनिट पावर वेन वर्किंग अंडर यूनिट हेड एट इट्स ऑप्टिमम कंडीशन एट इट्स मैक्सिमम एफिशियंसी और ऑप्टिमम कंडीशन सो अकॉर्डिंग टू द डेफिनेशन वॉट वी कैन से इफ the available head at the turbine inlet is 1 meter and the power developed by the turbine is 1 kilowatt then rpm of the shaft can be called as specific speed of the turbine if the available head is 1 meter and the power developed is 1 kilowatt and the size is such the size of the turbine is such that by having 1 meter of head available head it must develop unit power when it is working at its optimum condition then the rpm of the shaft of that particular turbine can be termed as the specific speed of the turbine we can call it as a specific speed yahan se dekhiye now if we can develop a relation between h p and n if we can develop a relation between h p and n then by re replacing h with 1 meter p with 1 kilowatt we can replace n with ns that is how we can develop the expression for the specific speed and why do we define the specific speed it is used to compare the performance of the different turbines this is used to compare the performance of the different turbines and also to select the suitable turbine for the given condition for the given situation which is most suitable turbine these are the two things which we can obtain or we, which we can get from the specific speed of the turbine this is the table which will give you an idea which turbine need to be installed for the given condition based on the specific speed if we calculate specific speed in its si unit if we calculate the specific speed in its si unit and if it is less than if specific speed is coming out to be less than 30 then the suitable turbine is the suitable turbine to be installed is a pelton wheel with a single jet single jet will be sufficient for that particular turbine when specific speed lies between 30 to 60 when specific speed lies between 30 to 60 multiple jets will be required this is the example of low specific speed this is low ns but if it is less than 30 single jet will be sufficient but if it is between 60 30 to 60 then multiple jets will be required the next is if ns lies between 60 to 300 then francis turbine will be installed that is the medium specific speed if you remember the classification this is the an example of medium specific speed 60 to 300 but if it is greater than 300 then the suitable turbine is kaplan or propeller that is the high specific speed so we need to calculate the specific speed to have the turbine selection there are questions asked from here they do not directly ask you to find out the specific speed but they ask you to find out which turbine will be suitable for the given situation so indirectly you are supposed to calculate the specific speed of the turbine right so first of all let us develop the formula of a specific speed based on the definition we say power is equal to 1 kilowatt available head is 1 meter then specific n will become ns so we need to develop a relation between power h and n our objective is to develop a relation you need to understand how to develop a relation between p h and n you should understand how to develop the relation between power head and rpm right now look 
फॉर ए पर्टिकुलर टर्बाइन ओवरऑल एफिशिएंसी इज द रेशियो ऑफ शार्ट पावर बाय हाइड्रोलिक पावर दैट वी ऑल नो शार्ट पावर कैन बी रिटर्न एज पी हाइड्रोलिक पावर इज एम डॉट जी एच दैट इज रो इंटू क्यू इंटू जी इंटू एच फॉर ए पर्टिकुलर ओवरऑल एफिशिएंसी वी कैन से पावर इज प्रपोर्शनल टू क्यू इंटू एच पावर विल बी प्रपोर्शनल टू क्यू इंटू एच इज एंट इट we need p h and n we do not require q so we can say power is proportional to d square into v into h because discharge is equal to pi by 4 d square into v now we can say power is proportional to d square into it will be root h into h Why v is given by root two g h torsional equation v is equal to root two g h. So from here we can say power is proportional to d square into h to the power one plus one by two that is three by two. That is equation number one. We do not require diameter here. We do not need diameter. What we need is p h and n. We need R P M. so d can be replaced by h and p and n how also what we know that u is given by pi d n by 60 so we can say u is proportional to d into n isn't it and phi is given by u by v so from here we can say v is proportional to u u so u can be replaced by v v is proportional to d into n and v is given by root 2 gh so root h is proportional to d into n that is how we can develop the relation from here we can say d square is proportional to h by n square put in equation number 1 if we put in equation number 1 then what do we get if we put in equation number 1 power is proportional to d square that is h by n square into h to the power 3 by 2 isn't it kya tha yahi tha h to the power 3 by 2 so we will get power is proportional to how much is that 1 plus 3 by 2 5 by 2 h to the power 5 by 2 upon n square if we write it in equation we can say power is equal to some random constant into h to the power 5 by 2 upon n square so to find the value of k we need, we use the the definition of specific speed if power is taken as 1 kilowatt and h is taken as 1 meter then n will be replaced by ns so if we put this value here what is the value of k if power is taken as 1 h will be taken as 1 n will become n ns square uh, n will become ns so k will become ns square isn't it put the value of k here so if we put the value of k then power is given by ns square into h to the power 5 by 2 upon n square and finally we get the expression for specific speed for the turbine what is the mathematical expression it is n under root of p upon h to the power it will become 5 by 4 this is the formula for specific speed of a turbine this will be the formula for specific speed of a turbine n root p upon h to the power 5 by 4 when n is the rpm where n is the rpm of the shaft revolution per minute h is the net head at inlet net or effective head at inlet net or effective head at inlet of the turbine the unit should be meter now p is the shaft power p is the shaft power developed so if 
P is in kilowatt, then NS will be in SI unit. If we take P in, in kilowatt, then only we will get NS in SI unit. If P is taken in horsepower, it is taken in horsepower, then NS will be in MKS unit. It is a dimensional parameter. Specific speed is a dimensional parameter. It is a dimensional parameter. It is not a dimensionless. If we put the value of n or uh, unit of n, so n is time inverse. Its dimensional formula can be written as f to the power 1 by 2, l to the power minus 3 by 4, t to the power minus 3 by 2. That is the dimensional formula for a specific speed. So, that is all about specific speed for a turbine. Similarly, we can define the specific speed for the pump also. The speed of a geometrically similar pump, which would deliver unit discharge. Pump is used to deliver the discharge. Turbine is used to develop power. So, for turbine, we, we talk about the power. For, for pump, we talk about the discharge. So, which would deliver unit discharge when working against the unit head, that is the manometric head, at its optimum condition. So, again we know when Q is taken as 1 meter cube per second, H is taken as 1 meter, then N will become NS for the pump. So, again we know we need to develop a relation between Q, H and N. Now, we are supposed to develop the relation between Q, H and N. How to develop? We can start with Q is directly proportional to D square into V, isn't it? Or we can say Q is directly proportional to D square into root H. Now, d square will be replaced. How? u is directly proportional to d into n. v is directly proportional to d into n. Root h is directly proportional to d into n. And d square is proportional to h by n square. Put this here. So, it will be q will be proportional to h by n square into root h. So, h to the power 3 by 2. Q will be proportional to h to the power 3 by 2 upon n square, isn't it? Or we can write it in equation Q is equal to some constant into h to the power 3 by 2 upon n square. So, if we use the condition Q is equal to 1 meter cube per second, h is equal to 1 meter, then n will become ns. So, from here k will be ns square the value of k here. So, q will be equal to ns square into h to the power 3 by 2 upon n square. So, from here we can find out the specific speed of the pump is equal to n under root q upon h to the power 3 by 4. That is the formula for a specific speed for a pump. Isn't it clear? Even if you do not memorize the formula, you can you can develop. You should be able to develop this formula. You should be able to develop this formula. You should remember the you should know the definition. Pump is used to de deliver the discharge. So unit discharge when acting against unit head, the the RPM of the shaft will be equal to the R, uh, specific speed of that particular turbine. Right. Similarly, we define the specific head or head coefficient, develop a relation between H, D and N. Can you develop a relation between H, D and N? U is proportional to D into N, V is proportional to D into N, root H is proportional to D into N. So, H is proportional to N square D square. So, H by n square into d square is constant that is called as a specific head that is called as hs h by n square d square right specific discharge q d and n develop a relation between q d and n q is proportional to d square into v Q 
क्यू इज प्रपोजनल टू डी स्क्वायर इंटू यू क्यू इज प्रपोजनल टू डी स्क्वायर इंटू डी एन सो क्यू इज प्रपोजनल टू एन डी क्यूब सो वी कैन से क्यू अपॉन एन डी क्यूब इज इक्वल टू कॉन्स्टेंट दैट इज कॉल्ड इज स्पेसिफिक डिस्चार्ज और डिस्चार्ज का फिशेंट सिमिलरली स्पेसिफिक पावर डेवलप ए रिलेशन बिटवीन पी डी एंड एन पावर इज प्रपोज टू क्यू इन टू एच रो क्यू जी एच सो पावर इज प्रपोज टू क्यू इज प्रपोज टू एन डी क्यूब एच इज दैट इज वी स्क्वायर पावर इज प्रपोज टू एन डी क्यूब इन टू यू स्क्वायर पावर इज प्रपोज टू एन डी क्यूब मल्टीप्लाइड बाई डी इन टू एन स्क्वायर so power is proportional to n cube d to the power 5 so from here we can say power upon n cube d to the power 5 is constant that is called as specific power these are some specific parameters why there is a need of defining these parameters that is important why do we define these parameters specific power specific discharge specific head specific speed these are the four specific parameters they are used to develop the characteristic curve for a turbine or a pump they are used to develop the characteristic for it curve for a turbine or a pump if d is constant for a particular turbine or a pump d will be constant for model and prototype d will be variable so for a particular turbine d is constant so we can say power which is proportional to n cube d to the power 5 so we can say power is proportional to n cube from here cubic discharge is proportional to n d cube so q is proportional to n linear head is proportional to n square d square for a constant diameter h is proportional to n square parabolic so this is how we can define we can develop the characteristic curve for a turbine or a pump what is most important is for a turbine or a pump and their models for a turbine or and and the pump and their models the value of these specific parameters always remain constant specific speed specific head specific discharge and specific power remain same for a turbine and its model or similarly for a pump and its model even if you change any parameter the other parameter will be changed in such a way that the specific parameter always remain constant so that is how the questions are framed from this part apne model laws padha hoga you must have studied about model laws in model laws what we do is we equate the dimensionless numbers or the dynamic similarity in model laws we talk about the dynamic similarity that is the ratio of forces and we if we take the ratio of forces it becomes the dimensionless number so for renold model law renold number for model is equal to renold number of prototype for fraud model law fraud number of model will be equal to fraud number of prototype but similar type of question can be can be framed from this turbine and its model or pump and its model then we are not supposed to equate the dimensionless numbers what we need to equate is these specific parameters these are the specific parameter which remains same for the model and its prototype they are defined only for hydraulic machine i hope this is clear to everyone anybody is having any doubt you can just let me know otherwise try to solve this question can you quickly solve this question everyone please give it a try then we will proceed further can you quickly solve this question read this question and try to solve i want you guys to solve this one
can you give it a try everyone please solve it and do let, let me know the answer how many of you are here please respond through the comment section those who are watching me live anybody is having anything to ask do let me know otherwise give it a try and find the answer this is how the questions are asked this question was asked in gate exam previous gate paper now how to solve this question that you need to understand first of all find out the parameter which are given a hydraulic turbine develops 1000 kilowatt power the power developed is 1000 kilowatt for a head of 40 meter when the available head is 40 meter when the available head was 40 meter if the head is reduced to 20 meter when head becomes 20 meter what will be the power developed so we are supposed to develop a relation between p and h from here we can say we are supposed to develop the relation between p and h so how to develop the relation as we know power is proportional to q into h right or we can say power is proportional to d square into v into h right because it is a single turbine so the diameter will be constant it is not about model and prototype diameter will be constant it is only the head which is changing so this diameter can be taken constant so power is proportional to v is proportional to root h into h so from here we develop the relation power is proportional to h to the power 3 by 2 if you are able to develop this relationship so p2 by p1 is equal to h2 by h1 to the power 3 by 2 everything is given you can find out the value of p2 what will be the value of p2 Bataye. quickly do let me know the value of p2 do not use the standard formula otherwise you might get incorrect answer so try to develop the expression on your own based on the given condition these are the given condition based on the given condition develop the formula on your own then you will get the correct answer otherwise you will not get the right answer option b is the correct answer 354 please do check do solve and let me know if you are getting 354 kilowatt or not p2 right tomorrow at 10 am we will be having mock test for complete mechanical engineering complete syllabus mock test will be there and it will be having the same pattern as that of your actual gate there will be 65 questions in total from the aptitude from the uh, engineering mathematics from the technical uh, portion as well so there will be mcq msq and nat so tomorrow at 10 am do join this mock test which is going to help you to improve your understanding or improve your revision as well as it is going to help you to develop the more and more confidence now we will have a little bit of discussion or a detailed discussion about the various turbines first we will be talking about the tangential flow impulse turbine and then we will be talking about the reaction turbine that will complete our syllabus for turbine turbine is more important compared to the pump and after the turbine we will move to the pump part all right so whenever it is tangential flow you should always have this thing in mind that u1 and u2 will be equal whenever the turbine is impulse vr1 is equal to vr2 because the pressure is constant that is p atm there is no change in pressure that is why pressure will be constant that is p atm the main components of the impulse turbine are given here these are the main components of impulse turbine there is a casing outer casing the whole turbine is arranged in a casing 
to prevent the splicing of water there is the nozzle with the spear for controlling the flow and there is the wheel or we can call it as rotor rotor with buckets buckets are the blades buckets or blades one and the same thing these are the major components of tangential flow impulse turbine how the impulse turbine develop power look if applies the principle of pure impulse effect what does that mean pure impulse effect means there is no change in pressure energy only kinetic uh, only the relative velocity change uh, sorry there is no change in the relative velocity pure impulse effect means kinetic energy changes but the pressure energy remains constant it is only the kinetic energy which changes it is only the kinetic energy which changes wherever however the pressure remains constant so this is called as impulse effect absolute velocity changes that is the impulse effect so water from the reservoir flows through the penny stock penny stock is the pipe only through which water comes to the turbine at the outlet of which a nozzle is fitted there is a nozzle fitted at the outlet of the turbine outlet of the penny stock and which increases the kinetic energy of the fluid in the nozzle what happens area decreases velocity increases nozzle is having a decrease in area so the velocity will increase and then water comes out from the nozzle in the form of jet striking the buckets tangentially so it is the kinetic energy which converts into mechanical energy it is only the kinetic energy which converts into mechanical energy that is how the rotation develops this is having the tangential flow this is how the blades are arranged or buckets are arranged this is the axis this is how the buckets are this is called as bucket this is the inlet point point one this is the exit point point two the fluid strike at inlet point and the leaves at two like this the fluid leaves from two and three so the radial distance of point one this is the let us say radial distance point two and point one are same r1 is equal to r2 that is why u1 is equal to u2 this is how the blades look like So, if the flow is tangential and if we draw the velocity triangle, try to understand the velocity triangle. From the nozzle, the fluid comes out with the absolute velocity that is V1. V1, the direction of V1 is like this. And this is point 1. If you extend point 1 tangentially, then you get Vr1. And because of clockwise rotation, U1 is having U1 is equal to U2 u1 is equal to u2 so u is this so alpha 1 is equal to beta 1 is equal to 0 inlet velocity triangle will be a straight line for an impulse turbine inlet velocity triangle will be a straight line alpha 1 is equal to beta 1 is equal to 0 and v1 is equal to vw1 and we can say vf1 is equal to 0 there is no flow component this is the direction of blade motion This is the direction of blade motion. And once the fluid strikes at point 1, then leaves the blade from point 2. This is point 2. Exit velocity triangle will look like this. Vr2 is fixed, beta2 is fixed. V2 can be of three types. V2 can be this also. V2 can be this also. This is alpha greater than 90 degree. This alpha is less than 90 degree. And u, u is... So, based on alpha 2, beta 2 is called as 180 degree minus theta. Theta is called as deflection angle. Theta is called as angle of deflection. Yeh theta is deflection angle. Jet deflection angle. jet deflection angle so beta 2 is 180 degree minus theta beta 2 will be 180 minus theta right so based on alpha 2 if alpha 2 less than equal to greater than 90 degree we can have u2 less than equal to greater than vr2 cos beta 2 
or we can have v w 2 less than equal to greater than 0. So, there are three possibilities for exit velocity triangle, but inlet velocity triangle will be a horizontal line. You all are aware about the velocity triangle. I had already discussed about the velocity triangle, right? Let us move to the analysis part quickly. What is jet velocity? That is V1 is the equal to CV coefficient of velocity into under root 2 gh. H is the net head available at the turbine inlet. Jet velocity is CV into root 2 gh. CV is coefficient of velocity. H is net head at inlet. at turbine inlet then u is equal to pi into d into n by 60 u1 is equal to u2 d is the wheel diameter d is the diameter of the wheel n is the rpm of the shaft or n is the rpm revolution per minute of the wheel and as alpha 1 is equal to beta 1 is equal to 0. So, we can say V 1 is equal to V R 1 plus U, is not it? Scalar addition or we can say V R 1 is equal to V 1 minus U, is not it? And V R 2 is equal to K times of V R 1. K is the friction factor on the buckets. On bucket surface. K is the friction factor on the surface of the bucket. For ideal flow or for frictionless buckets. For frictionless bucket, k is equal to 1, v1 is, vr1 is equal to vr2 and beta2 is equal to 180 degree minus theta. Sometimes theta is given, theta is the jet deflection angle. Theta is the jet deflection angle, 180 minus theta is beta2, blade angle at outlet. Is not it? Can we say V1 is equal to from here V1 is equal to VW1 and VF1 is equal to 0? Right? What is the degree of reaction? What is the degree of reaction? Degree of reaction will be 0. Why? Because the pressure remains constant. Pressure is constant. There is no variation in pressure that is PATM impulse turbine degree of reaction will be 0. Right? Now, the performance parameter for impulse turbine there is a nozzle also. So, power at the base of the nozzle is given by m dot into g into h that is the power at the nozzle base or power at the nozzle inlet. Jet power or hydraulic power jet power or hydraulic power is equal to half into m dot into v1 square. Rotor power is given by look is equal to m dot into v w1 minus v w2 into u. v w2 must be used with sign or we can write it as m dot into v1 square minus v2 square by 2 plus vr2 square minus vr1 square by 2 because u is equal, u1 is equal to u2. This is the rotor power. Look. Now, the rotor power can be written, this runner power or rotor power 
can be can also be written in terms of u and v1 look if we want to develop the rotor power which is m dot into v w1 minus v w2 into u as a function of u and v1 look how to do that v w1 is equal to v1 right and what is v w2 v w2 can be written as from this velocity triangle let me call it as v r2 this is beta 2 alpha 2 is let us say greater than 90 degree so this is v2 and this is u u is complete so v w2 is this much this is v w2 v w2 can be written as v w2 can be written as u minus v r2 cos beta 2 isn't it and v r2 can be written as k into v r1 sorry u minus k into v r1 cos beta 2 and v r1 can be written as u minus k then it is v1 minus u cos beta 2 if put these values in the above equation so the runner power if we put these values v w1 and v w2 in above equation then the runner power will have three expressions one is m dot into v w1 minus v w2 into u or we can write it as m dot into v1 square minus v2 square by 2 plus v r2 square minus v r1 square by 2 and the third expression we get is the third expression we will get is m dot into u into v1 minus u 1 plus k cos beta 2 these are the various formula for calculating the runner power whatever the parameters given in the question based on that we can develop the we can use the formula there are three formula which are used which can be used to to find out the runner power v1 is the jet velocity v1 is the jet velocity and u is the blade speed or the bucket velocity clear from here we define the nozzle efficiency because the nozzle power power at the base of the nozzle is maximum then comes the hydraulic power or jet power then comes runner power and finally shaft power was there shaft power also written shaft power is equal to torque into omega shaft power is torque into omega so nozzle efficiency is equal to the ratio of jet power that is half into m dot into v1 square upon m dot into g into h if you simplify this then we will get cv square m dot m dot getting cancel out this is the nozzle efficiency this ratio will give rise to nozzle efficiency then hydraulic efficiency or jet efficiency rotor power by hydraulic power hydraulic power so we can write one upon hydraulic power is rho qgh or m dot gh the ratio of rotor power by hydraulic power the ratio of rotor power by hydraulic power is hydraulic efficiency or jet efficiency that can be written as hydraulic power is 1 upon m dot into g into h sorry it is rotor power by jet power rotor power by jet power or we can call it as hydraulic power m dot sorry half 1 upon half m dot v1 square that is the denominator and the numerator can be the numerator can be written as either m dot v w1 minus v w2 into u or the numerator can be written as or we can write it as 
एम डॉट इंटू यू इंटू वी वन माइनस यू वन प्लस के कॉस बीटा टू अपॉन लेट मी राइट रोटर पावर आई हैव ऑलरेडी रिटर्न इन थ्री वेज द रोटर पावर आई हैव ऑलरेडी रिटर्न इन थ्री वेज आईदर यू राइट दिस और यू राइट दिस और यू राइट दिस इफ आई यूज दिस एक्सप्रेशन देन लेट अस सी वॉट एपन्स सो द रोटर पावर और वी कैन से हाइड्रोलिक एफिशियंसी और जेट एफिशियंसी इज गिवन बाई एम डॉट इंटू यू इंटू वी वन माइनस यू वन प्लस के कॉस बीटा टू अपॉन हाफ इंटू एम डॉट इंटू वी वन स्क्वायर एम डॉट एम डॉट गेटिंग कैंसल आउट सो इट विल बिकम टू यू वी वन माइनस यू इंटू वन प्लस के कॉस बीटा टू अपॉन वी वन स्क्वायर दैट इज दैट इज द एक्सप्रेशन फॉर हाइड्रोलिक एफिशिएंसी और जेट एफिशिएंसी फॉर द जेट एफिशिएंसी टू बी मैक्सिमम फॉर जेट एफिशिएंसी टू बी मैक्सिमम द डिफ्रेंशिएशन ऑफ जेट एफिशिएंसी विद रेस्पेक्ट टू वी वन शुड बी जीरो और विद रेस्पेक्ट टू यू मस्ट बी जीरो यू इज द वेलोसिटी विच इज डेवलप्ड ड्यू टू रोटेशन is equal to 0 if you do this calculation then u will come out to be v1 by 2 that is the condition and the maximum jet efficiency the maximum jet efficiency will be equal to 1 plus k cos beta 2 by 2 that is greater than 50% we are getting the jet efficiency to be 1 plus k cos beta 2 by maximum jet efficiency and the condition for maximum efficiency the blade speed is half of the jet velocity the blade velocity is half of the jet velocity cos beta 2 is greater than 1 sorry cos beta 2 is positive so 1 plus some positive number divided by 2 that is greater than 50% greater than 1 by 2 then mechanical efficiency is the ratio of shaft power by rotor power isn't it overall efficiency is the product of nozzle efficiency jet efficiency into mechanical efficiency this is how we can define the efficiency and some design parameters let us talk about some of the design parameters speed ratio phi will be equal to u upon under root 2 gh it is the velocity as the nozzle base fluid velocity at nozzle base root 2 gh similarly flow ratio psi is equal to vf by under root 2 gh wheel diameter u is equal to pi dn by 60 so we can find out the wheel diameter 60 u by pi n that is the diameter of the wheel jet ratio the ratio of wheel diameter to the jet diameter is the the jet ratio next the number of buckets on the wheel the number of buckets required on the wheel 15 plus m by 2 what is m m is the jet rate uh, jet ratio so z is equal to number of buckets z is equal to 15 plus capital d by 2d and the number of jets n will be is equal to the ratio of total discharge divided by discharge in a single jet that is pi by 4 d square into v1 the discharge in a single jet हेलो कैन यू गाइस हियर मी मेरी आवाज आ रही है आप लोगों को कैन यू गाइस हियर मी प्लीज डू लेट मी नो इफ आई एम ऑडिबल एंड विजिबल टू यू ऑल
Can you hear me? Can you hear me? आगे बढ़े There is a question on the screen that completes our discussion for impulse turbine. Then we will move to the reaction turbine, and that will complete our discussion for the turbine. In a Pelton wheel, the bucket peripheral speed is 10 meter per second. What is this? The bucket peripheral speed is u. U is equal to 10 meter per second given. The water jet velocity is 25 meter per second, that is V1. 25 meter per second jet velocities. And the volume flow rate is 0 0.1 meter cube per second. Q is 0 0.1 meter cube per second. Right? If the jet deflection angle is 120 degree, what de does that mean? Theta is equal to 120 degree. It means beta 2 is equal to 180 minus 120, that is 60 degree and the flow is ideal what does that mean k is equal to 1 or we can say vr2 is equal to vr1 ideal flow the power developed in kilowatt is so which power is asked from these velocity you can only find out the rotor power rotor power we can use m dot u into v1 minus u 1 plus k cos beta 2 if you use this formula, you will get the answer. Mass flow rate is density into discharge, that is 0 0.1 into u, 10 meter per second, then v1 minus u, 25 minus 10, multiplied by 1 plus k is 1, cos beta 2 is cos 60. Do the calculation, you will get the answer. Are you getting 22.5 or not? In kilowatt, it will be 22.5. In kilowatt, it will be 22.5. All right. So now let us move to the now let us move to the reaction turbine reaction or pressure turbine whenever we are having the reaction turbine to be discussed vw2 will be taken as zero or we can say v2 is minimum or alpha 2 is equal to 90 degree that is the common case of reaction turbine and for reaction turbine vf1 is equal to vf2 that is constant we can call it as vf to have uniform discharge to have the uniform discharge vf1 is equal to vf2 main components are casing that is spiral casing casing is spiral like this there are guide vanes or we can call it as call them stator veins which are fixed then runner with blades they are called as rotor blades rotor veins and there is a draft tube also in reaction turbine there is no nozzle but there is a draft tube the working principle for a reaction turbine reaction turbine applies the principle of both reaction and the impulse effect it means both the kinetic energy and pressure energy changes both kinetic energy and pressure energy changes both the energy changes pressure energy as well as kinetic energy each stage of reaction turbine consists of fixed and moving blades fixed blades means stator blades Moving blades means rotor blades. Each stage of reaction turbine consists of fixed and moving blades forming the nozzle passage. There is no nozzle as such, but the blades are arranged in such a way that they form the nozzle passage. So, there is a pressure drop. In nozzle, what happens? Area decreases, velocity increases. So, the pressure is decreased. 
pressure decreases producing power which is accompanied by increase in velocity also velocity will also increase so to have the minimum increase in velocity the discharge is radial at outlet that is the reason of having the radial discharge at outlet to have the increase in velocity to be minimum if v2 is minimum for keep for having v2 to be minimum alpha 2 must be 0 alpha 2 must be 90 degree and vw2 must be 0 and the fluid is then, then passed through the dra draft tube for the recovery of the pressure pressure again increases in the draft tube so it reaction turbine is also called as pressure turbine total pressure energy drop is equal to mechanical energy produced plus increase in kinetic energy there is an increase in kinetic energy also so that is why we need to keep this to be minimum this is loss that is not useful that is not at all useful so agar pressure energy drop 100 unit ho raha hai mechanical energy produced 70 ho gaya so the remaining increase in kinetic energy will be 30 so if we can decrease this 30 by having this to be minimum agar isko minimize kar dein alpha 2 ko 90 karke if alpha 2 is taken 90 degree then if this is taken as 20 then the mechanical energy produced will become 80 so that is how we can have more power produced by keeping a tab on the increase in velocity and that is why vw2 is equal to zero or the discharge is radial at outlet that is how it works discharge is radial at outlet all right if there is no loss if water flows through veins veins means stator plus rotor so according to energy conservation equation so we can write the energy equation the energy at inlet is equal to work produced plus energy at outlet kinetic energy at outlet if there is no energy loss so energy at inlet is m dot into g into h power produced is m dot into vw1 into u1 because vw2 is zero plus kinetic energy is half into m dot into v2 uh, kinetic energy at outlet so from this we can write we can develop the expression or h can be written as 1 by g into vw1 u1 plus v2 square by 2 this is another expression which can be used for a reaction turbine vw2 is taken as 0 for reaction turbine vw2 is 0 right how the draft tube works this is point 2 the fluid leaves from the turbine at point 2 and this is let us say point 3 so this is the turbine uh, draft tube so the inlet of the draft tube is the outlet of the turbine casing and the outlet of the draft tube is in the tail race so draft tube is a diffuser passage used in reaction turbine only for carrying the water from turbine outlet to the tail race the tail uh, the the outlet of the draft tube is always kept submerged in the tail race because it is a diffuser passage area is increasing in the flow direction velocity will decrease and the pressure will increase so it is used for pressure recovery it is used to convert the kinetic energy at the turbine outlet into pressure energy pressure recovery now why do we use the draft tube try to understand it causes the pressure at the turbine outlet to decrease below the atmospheric pressure. Do you agree P3 is equal to PATM? And do you agree P2 is less than P3 which is equal to PATM? So, delta P 
डेल्टा पी इज इक्वल टू पी वन माइनस पी टू इंक्रीजेस बाई यूजिंग द ड्राफ्ट यू विदाउट द ड्राफ्ट यू पी टू वॉज पी एटीएम विदाउट द ड्राफ्ट यू पी टू इज पी एटीएम बट वंस वी अटैच ए ड्राफ्ट यू पी टू बिकम्स लेस देन पी एटीएम सो पी वन माइनस पी टू इंक्रीजेस सो इफ दिस गेट्स इंक्रीज इन प्लेस ऑफ हंड्रेड इट इफ दिस बिकम्स वन टेन देन द मैकेनिकल एनर्जी प्रोड्यूस विल बिकम नाइनटी एंड देन दिस इज ट्वेंटी That is how it increases the pressure difference. It causes the pressure at the turbine outlet to decrease the below the atmospheric pressure, enabling the turbine to utilize its available head more efficiently. That is how draft tube is attached. That is the physical significance. That is the significance of using the draft tube in a reaction turbine. All right. now the efficiency of the draft tube the ratio of actual conversion of kinetic energy into the pressure energy in the draft tube what is the kinetic energy at 2 half into m dot into v2 square what is the kinetic energy at 3 half into m dot into v3 square to the kinetic energy available at the inlet of the draft tube there is some energy loss in the draft tube so it will be we can say that pressure increase will be half into m dot into v2 square minus half m dot into v3 square minus m dot into g into head loss in the draft tube divide by half into m dot into v2 square that will be the expression for the draft tube hd is this is the efficiency of the draft tube hd is the head loss in the draft tube H, hd is the head loss in the draft tube now look only reaction turbine and centrifugal pump are subjected to cavitation in reaction turbine the pressure is minimum at this point p2 is less than p atm the pressure is minimum at point 2 so the chances of cavitation is at turbine outlet or the draft tube inlet in in case of impulse turbine there is no change in pressure pressure remains constant that is patm but in case of uh, in case of reaction turbine there is a decrease in pressure at the turbine outlet so we can say so we can say there is a chances of cavitation in reaction turbine the cavitation chance is at turbine outlet or the draft tube inlet but in centrifugal pump it is at the suction side or the inlet of the pump we will discuss about that because reaction centrifugal pump and reaction turbines are opposite in their working principle so at in the reaction turbine that hello teju welcome in the reaction turbine the minimum pressure is at the turbine outlet that is why the chances of cavitation is more at the turbine outlet but in centrifugal pump the minimum pressure is at the inlet of the pump and that is why the chances of cavitation in centrifugal pump is at the inlet of the pump all right clear where you have been teju kahan the itna der tak velocity triangle you already are familiar alpha 1 is fixed beta 1 based on beta 1 there are three possibilities if beta 1 is less than 90 degree if beta 1 is equal to 90 degree if beta 1 is greater than 90 degree and exit velocity triangle is fixed v r 2 u 2 v u 2 is equal to v r 2 cos beta 2 वी आर टू कॉस बीटा टू एल्फा टू इज इक्वल टू नाइनटी डिग्री दैट इज वी टू वी एफ इज इक्वल टू वी टू वी एफ आर कॉन्स्टेंट वी एफ वन इज इक्वल टू वी एफ टू अच्छा यू आर देयर इन मैथ क्लास एप पे जो चल रहा है इज इट ओवर और इज स्टिल गोइंग ऑन लेट एस टॉक अबर द परफॉर्मेंस पैरामीटर हाइड्रोलिक पावर इज दे आर वेरी सिंपल कितना देर तक चलेगा मैथ्स क्लास लेट एस टॉक अबाउट द हाइड्रोलिक पावर दैट इज इक्वल टू एम डॉट इन टू जी इन टू एच 
what is the rotor power that is m dot into it will be v w 1 into u 1 only or you can write expanded form m dot v 1 square minus v 2 square by 2 plus u 1 square minus u 2 square by 2 plus v r 2 square minus v r 1 square by 2 that is the runner power Achha. <laughs> then shaft power torque into omega hydraulic efficiency the ratio of rotor power by hydraulic power simple mechanical efficiency the ratio of shaft power by hydraulic power then overall efficiency will be the product of hydraulic efficiency into mechanical efficiency they are very simple then the reaction turbine can be of two types one is radial flow if flow is radial then u1 will not be equal to u2 but vf1 is equal to vf2 right and vw2 is equal to zero they will be applicable vf is known as flow component or radial component of velocity we can call it as radial component for radial flow turbine a vf can be called as radial component of the velocity example is francis but discharge if we want to write then it will be pi into d1 into b1 Achha. pi into d1 into b1 into vf because the flow is radial the area will be the peripheral area pi dl so at inlet diameter is d1 b1 is the width b1 and b2 are the width at inlet and outlet width at inlet they are not same and outlet respectively the blades are like this if you see the width this is b1 at inlet this is b1 and at outlet this is b2 they are different b1 are b1 b1 and b2 are different because d1 and d2 are different but the discharge will remain constant discharge will remain constant similarly for axial flow reaction turbine u1 will be equal to u2 that is equal to pi into d0 into n by 60 what is d0 d0 is this this is point 0.1 this is point 0.2 and because it is a reaction turbine so vf1 is equal to vf2 and vw2 is equal to 0 they are valid for all the reaction turbines right vf is called as axial component of velocity we can call it as axial component velocity because the direction is axial vf will have the direction as that of the normal to the blade motion vf will be having the direction normal to the blade motion that is called as axial direction kaplan and propeller turbine are examples here the discharge will be pi by 4 d naught square minus db square into vf pi by 4 d square d naught and db this is db db is called as hub diameter and d naught is called as runner diameter d naught is called as runner diameter db is called as hub diameter all right and kaplan turbine is little more efficient everything else is same for for uh, for francis and the kaplan and propeller the the things which are different in axial flow compared to the radial flow that i have mentioned over here otherwise the velocity triangle the analysis as well as the the performance parameter all are same in both the type of reaction turbine so kaplan turbine is little more efficient than the propeller turbine because the kaplan turbine is having adjustable blades compared to the propeller turbine in propeller turbine the blades are fixed there is a question on the screen can you try solving this one at the inlet of an axial impulse turbine rotor axial means u1 is equal to u2 that is u impulse turbine it means vr1 is equal to vr2 isn't it axial means u1 is equal to u2 and impulse turbine means vr1 is equal to vr2 because there is no change in pressure the blade linear speed is 25 meter per second u is 25 magnitude of absolute velocity it is about inlet magnitude of absolute velocity is 100 meter per second this is v1 
isn't it v1 this is v1 and that is why this is vr1 vr1 that is the inlet velocity triangle and the angle between them is 25 degree which is given the relative velocity and axial component of velocity remains same axial component of velocity that is vf1 is equal to vf2 vf1 is equal to vf2 and the relative velocity that is vr1 is equal to vr2 that is also given between the inlet and outlet of blade the blade inlet and outlet velocity triangles are shown in figure assuming low, no losses specific power in joule per kg what exactly is the specific power what is the specific power joule per kg specific power is power divided by mass flow rate that is called as specific power so we need to find out the power developed that is the rotor power divided by mass flow rate so rotor power divided by mass flow rate can we say from here look can we say this is vr2 because vr1 is equal to vr2 and this is v2 so if we use if we use the expanded formula that is equal to v1 square minus v2 square by 2 uh, impulse effect u1 square minus u2 square by 2 that is centrifugal effect plus vr2 square minus vr1 square by 2 that is the reaction effect if we use these effects because u1 is equal to u2 this will be 0 vr1 v is equal to vr2 this will be 0 what is the specific work can you find out the value of specific work power divided by mass flow rate that is v1 square minus v2 square by 2 specific work is equal to what is v1 square that is 100 square minus 58.6 square divided by 2 how much is that what is the answer can you solve it what is the answer please do solve it and let me know the answer everyone are you getting 328 3.02 joule per kg joule per kg 328 3 point are you guys getting it or not now quickly we will discuss about the centrifugal pump and reciprocating pump and that our syllabus will be over all right please do let me know if anybody is having any doubt in turbine that is all about the turbine now let us move to the pump yes stage you three two eight three point zero two you can also use the velocity triangle you can calculate with vw1 u1 minus vw2 u2 also but that will involve lot of complex complexities and your chances of getting the incorrect answer will be there so better to use the expression which is very simple to use the expanded form will directly give you the result no need to find out the value of vw1 vw2 here vw2 will be negative here vw2 will be actually negative vw2 is negative that you need to take care vw1 will be this this is vw1 we can find out vw1 vw2 and u1 and u2 are same so we can calculate vw1 plus vw2 into u will give you the result right so that you need to take care so let us start talking about the pump now and then our discussion will be over for hydraulic machine those who have missed any portion yes flow velocity will be same that is given in the question flow velocity will be same vf1 and vf2 will be same here vf1 we can find out vf we can first find out vf 
this is vf vf can be calculated from 100 sin 25 once we get vf 100 sin 25 we know this we can find out vw2 like this and vw1 is equal to vw1 is equal to 100 cos 25 vw1 is 100 cos 25 vw2 can be calculated from here from this triangle right and then what we need to do is vw1 plus vw2 into u why we have taken positive that is specific power why we have taken positive because vw2 must be used with sign negative it is negative that is the reason because alpha 2 is less than 90 degree this is alpha 2 which is less than 90 degree so let us talk about the pump pump is used to deliver the discharge by increasing the pressure pump is used to deliver the discharge by increasing the pressure by increasing fluid pressure fluid pressure that is the basic that is the basic concept of a pump pump is used for delivering the discharge by increasing the pressure by rising the pressure of the fluid so the hydraulic energy of the fluid increases across the pump it increases the pressure energy of the fluid and due to which there is the, the discharge gets delivered so based on the fluid flow pattern based on the fluid flow pattern there are two type of pumps one is when the flow is continuous for discharge is constant continuous flow and another pump the discharge is non uniform discharge is variable for con continuous flow for continuous flow the pressure rise is due to centrifugal action or rotation the pressure rise of the fluid is taking place due to centrifugal action or rotation of the shaft and here when for variable discharge the pressure rise is due to to and fro motion of the piston translatory motion of the piston centrifugal action of rotor and due to translatory translatory motion of piston so cent because the pressure rise is due to centrifugal action that is why it is called a centrifugal pump and the pressure rise is due to translatory motion that is why it is called as reciprocating pump there are two types of pumps yes they do that is that is centrifugal pump whenever there is a rotating part if if the pump is having some part which is rotating then it is centrifugal pump and if the pump is having the translatory part like piston piston cylinder arrangement if there is a translatory motion then it is uh, uh, reciprocating pump hand operated pump like hand pump or air pump or air pump are examples of reciprocating pump hair dryer vacuum cleaner exhaust fan these are examples of hand pump is reciprocating pump hair dryer vacuum cleaner dishwasher exhaust fan these are all centrifugal pump it is also known as centrifugal pump is also called as dynamic pressure pump because it is the kinetic energy of the fluid or it is the kinetic energy of the fluid which converts into pressure energy that is why it is called as dynamic pressure pump the kinetic energy first the kinetic energy of the fluid get increased and that increase in kinetic energy will convert into the pressure energy that is how the pressure rise will take place that is why it is called as dynamic pressure pump and reciprocating pump is called as uh, positive displacement pump because the control volume contracts and expands delivering water that is why it is called as because the control volume shrinks and expands 
that is why it is called as displacement pump the control volume displaces the water Con contraction will suck the water then sorry expansion of the control volume is suck, will create a suction for the water flow and then uh, contraction of the control volume will deliver the water centrifugal uh, pump is based on the principle of forced vortex motion p plus rho g z minus rho v square by 2 that is forced vortex motion and uh, reciprocating pump is based on the principle of heart pumping of blood in the heart this is the principle of reciprocating pump centrifugal pump is suitable for low suction head and high delivery head the delivery pipe is long suction pipe is short whereas the reciprocating pump is having high suction head and the low delivery head in reciprocating pump the delivery pipe is small but the suction pipe is large first of all let us talk about the centrifugal pump quickly centrifugal pump main components are casing again spiral casing it is like reaction turbine or radial flow reaction turbine there is an impeller or rotor with the vanes there is a suction pipe and there is a delivery pipe suction pipe is also having a valve one way valve delivery pipe is also having a valve so this is how these are the major components of centrifugal pump how the water is delivered look the principle of centrifugal pump is inverse of Francis turbine it is radial outward flow the flow is radial outward due to the centrifugal action due to rotation of the shaft the partial vacuum is created at the impeller tip here the vacuum will be created here the vacuum will be created partial vacuum is created at the tip of the impeller causing the liquid to move in suction pipe axially this is the suction pipe the fluid enters into the suction pipe axially then pump imparts the energy to the liquid here the liquids get accumulated and the rotation of the pump imparts the energy to the liquid by means of a centrifugal force due to centrifugal force the the energy will be transferred to the fluid the kinetic energy will be transferred to the fluid or kinetic energy of the fluid will increase due to rotation of the impeller which is having blades multiple blades now each stage of centrifugal pump fixed and moving blade form diffuser passage so in diffuser passage what happens the area is increasing so the kinetic energy will decrease and the pressure will increase that is how the rise in pressure will take place and that is why it is called as that is why centrifugal pump is also known as dynamic pressure pump so that is how the liquid pressure increases and due to rise in pressure of the liquid that this the water get discharged i have already told you about the forward facing vanes when beta 2 is greater than 90 degree it is called as forward facing vanes beta 2 is equal to 90 degree radial blades beta 2 less than 90 degree backward veins this is beta 2 this is alpha 2 this is beta 2 this is alpha 2 three velocity triangle this is beta 2 this is alpha 2 this is how the velocity triangle can be drawn mostly backward or radial veins are used for better operating conditions even though in forward veins develop more pressure rise even though the forward blades develop more pressure rise but the backward or the radial blades are preferred because of high velocity developed at the impeller exit which may result in pressure waves or shock waves that is the reason only the radial or backward veins are preferred what is the pressure rise or the power rise is equal to m dot into vw2 into u2 minus vw1 into u1 here it will be zero so more is vw2 more will be the rise in pressure here beta 2 is greater than 90 degree so vw2 is greater than u2 isn't it if beta 2 is equal to 90 degree u2 is equal to vw2 and if beta 2 less than 90 degree then vw2 is less than u2 so vw2 is more for forward veins but 
because they may result in shock waves that is why radial and radial and radial or backward veins are preferred now let us talk about the analysis of the pump suction head the first term is suction head or we can call it a suction lift hs the vertical distance this is the pump center line the vertical distance of this is the pump center line the vertical distance between the pump center line and the sump level this is sump that is called as static suction head hs this is called as hs the vertical distance between the pump center line and the sump level similarly delivery head or the discharge head we can also call it as discharge head discharge head is the vertical distance between the pump center line and the delivery point this is the delivery point this is the delivery point so this is static discharge head that is hd and the total static head is equal to capital hs that is hs plus hd that is called as static head total static head is capital hs that is sum of hs and hd these are the various heads and then we talk about the manometric head the net head raised by the pump is called as manometric head or we can call it as the head against which centrifugal pump works if we draw the energy gradient line like this this is hm hm so hm can be written as h2 minus h1 or we can write it as hp minus hn i have already told you about this this is called as manometric head head against which centrifugal pump works so if we write the energy conservation between 1 and 2 these will be the notations we are going to use vs is the velocity of fluid in the suction pipe vd is for velocity of the fluid in the delivery pipe hs is the suction head hd is the delivery head hfs is the head losses in the suction pipe hfd is the head losses in the delivery pipe and the total suction head or total static head static head that can also be written as capital hs or hst I am using capital HS that is the static head that is HS plus HD. These will be the notations we are going to use. Now we can write the manometric head. Look what is H1? Point 0.1 is here. Look this is point 0.1 and this is let us say point 0.2. P1 is equal to PS because the pressure in suction pipe v1 is equal to vs and z1 will be equal to z2 similarly if we talk about p2 is equal to pd v2 is equal to vd and z1 is equal to z2 because they are at the same horizontal line so if we write hm is equal to h1 minus h2 because z1 is same as z2 so we can say hm will be equal to pd by rho g plus vd square by 2g minus ps by rho g plus vs square by 2g isn't it this is the expression for manometric head this is the expression for manometric head this is another expression for manometric head we are applying energy conservation equation between 1 and 2 we are writing energy conservation equation between point 0.1 and point 0.2 that is the manometric head another expression we can develop look if we apply the energy conservation equation between a and b a and b so pa is equal to patm pb is also patm vb is equal to 0 va is also equal to 0 this is the center line of the pump that is the reference so we can say z1 is equal to minus hs and zb is equal to za is equal to minus zs minus hs zb is equal to hd isn't it this is hd 
this is hs so if we write the energy conservation if we apply energy equation between a and b if we write the energy conservation equation between a and b then what we can say we can say h a plus head raised by the pump is equal to h b plus losses plus head losses what is h a minus h s plus h m is equal to h d plus h f s plus h f d that is another expression for h m so h m is equal to h s plus h d plus h f s plus h f d or this can be written as capital h s that is another way of writing the manometric head h f s is the frictional head loss in suction pipe h f d is the frictional head loss in delivery pipe now the performance parameters let us talk about the performance parameters i will try to complete by 2 couple of important things need to be discussed otherwise the pump is not very important shaft power is torque into omega impeller or rotor power is given by m dot into v w 2 into u 2 because v w 1 is equal to 0 because alpha 1 is equal to 90 degree i have already told you common case of centrifugal pump hydraulic power or manometric power power available at the pump exit hydraulic power is equal to m dot into g into hm manometric head this is how these are the various sharp power is more than rotor power so this is called as mechanical efficiency then we define the hydraulic efficiency and the overall efficiency mechanical efficiency is the ratio of rotor power by shaft power hydraulic efficiency is the ratio of manometric efficiency is the ratio of hydraulic power to the rotor power Vol there is a term called as volumetric efficiency because of the losses of discharge q minus delta q upon q into 100 that is called as volumetric efficiency delta q discharge loss loss due to leakage if there is a leakage and due to leakage there might be some discharge loss so there is a volumetric efficiency and overall efficiency is the ratio of these hydraulic power by sharp power speed ratio we can define u upon v that is v f by v flow ratio and speed ratio can be defined like this now the next is important minimum speed for starting a centrifugal pump this is important minimum speed for starting a centrifugal pump now for delivering the water to the discharge pipe the rise in pressure head in the impeller should be greater than manometric head this is important for discharging the water the rise in pressure head across the impeller should be greater than hm so pd by rho g minus ps by rho g should be greater than equal to hm if this ratio this difference the rise in pressure will be less than hm then then rotor will rotate but it won't deliver the water for delivering the water this should be the condition and due to rotor rotation due to impeller rotation due to rotation of the impeller water in contact will also rotate water in contact will also rotate so it will be the case of forced vortex isn't it forced vortex motion and for forced vortex we can say p plus rho g z minus rho v square by 2 is constant z1 is equal to z2 
there is no involvement of potential energy neither in pump nor in turbine so this expression can be written as this can be written as vd square minus v square by 2g or that can be written as omega square by 2g into r2 square minus r1 square should be greater than equal to hm so omega minimum so from here we can define or we can find out minimum value of omega is equal to under root of 2g hm upon r2 square minus r1 square that is the minimum speed or we can equate it to pi n minimum upon 60 that is how we can find out the minimum speed for delivering the water the minimum speed for starting a centrifugal pump n is the minimum rpm r1 and r2 r what are r1 and r2 r1 and r2 r radial distances of point 1 and point 2 radial distance of inlet and outlet respectively outlet of the rotor of impeller radial distance of inlet and outlet of the rotor yes that is how we can find out this and how to calculate hm and what what is the hydraulic efficiency if you see the hydraulic efficiency what is hydraulic efficiency that is hydraulic power by rotor power hydraulic efficiency is the hydraulic power by rotor power as hydraulic efficiency is hydraulic power by rotor power what is hydraulic power that is m dot g into hm what is the rotor power m dot into v w2 into u2 m dot m dot getting cancelled out so here hm can be taken as hydraulic efficiency multiplied by v w2 u2 upon g into upon g that is how we can find out hydraulic or manometric manometric head that is how we can write the manometric head so couple of important points for a pump for optimum efficiency of a centrifugal pump we are talking about the centrifugal pump discharge must enter without whirl v1 should be minimum or vw1 is equal to 0 or we can say alpha 1 is equal to 90 degree discharge must enter without whirl that is the inverse of reaction turbine inverse of reaction turbine that is the first point second point is to increase the head at constant discharge if you want to increase the head or if you want to increase the height if you want to take the fluid to a higher level then pumps must be arranged in series and if we want to increase the discharge if we want to increase the flow rate for the same height for a constant head then they must be arranged in parallel it is like pipes in series and pipes in parallel if the pipes are arranged in parallel the discharge gets increased if the pipes are arranged in series then the loss gets increased right so to increase the head at a constant discharge pipes must be arranged pumps must be arranged in series and to increase the discharge at a constant head they must be arranged in parallel and the third point is again important because the suction is created at the pump inlet due to rotation due to centrifugal action there is a suction created at the inlet of the pump and due to which the the water travels or water moves in the suction pipe so the suction pressure at the pump inlet must not fall below the atmospheric uh, below the vapor pressure of water to avoid the cavitation if the suction pressure become less than so p suction should be greater than p vapor to avoid the cavitation the suction pressure cannot be less than the vapor pressure of water to avoid the cavitation i hope you know about the phenomena of cavitation now again in important part let us find out the maximum suction lift or ma maximum suction height if we apply the energy conservation equation between a and one this is point a 
I am calling this as point A. This is point 1. We need to find out HS maximum. Our objective is to find out maximum suction height or HS maximum. How to find out the maximum suction lift? Look, if we apply, if we take the energy at A, PA is equal to PATM, isn't it? What is the value of PA? PA will be equal to PATM, VA is equal to 0, VA will be equal to 0 and ZA is equal to minus HS, point 1. P1 is equal to PS, V1 is equal to VS and Z1 is equal to 0 because this is the reference line. If we apply the energy conservation equation between 1 and A and 1, the flow is from A to 1. So, we can say energy equation, according to energy equation, we can say HA is equal to H1 plus HFS, isn't it? HA is equal to H1 plus HFS. The fluid is moving from A to 1. So, what is HA? That is PATM by rho G. VA will be 0 minus HS is equal to HS uh, PS by rho G plus VS square by 2G plus HFS, head loss in the suction pipe. So, from here we can find out HS. What is HS? HS will be equal to PATM by rho G minus PS by rho G minus VS square by 2G minus HFS, isn't it? The pressure does not decrease, Teju, in the pump pressure always increase, at the suction, at the inlet of the pump, the pressure is minimum. Why the pressure is minimum? To make the fluid flow in the suction pipe. Due to centrifugal action, due to rotation of the rotor or impeller, there is a suction created at the tip. So, the fluid from the sump level, the fluid travels up to the tip. Then due to rotation, the the the, uh, the impeller imparts energy to the fluid. So, they, there is a kinetic energy comes into picture. The fluid develops the kinetic energy and that kinetic energy decreases and the pressure increases. So, nowhere in the pump there, there is a decrease in pressure. It always increases inside the pump. Only the suction point, only the tip of the impeller, the pressure is minimum, right? So, this is the expression for HS to be maximum, PS to be minimum, for HS to be maximum, PS should be minimum, isn't it? But PS should be greater than P vapor to avoid cavitation. But to avoid cavitation, PS should be greater than P vapor. So, what is the minimum value of PS when we do not want the cavitation? So, from here we can write, from here we can write HS maximum to be PATM by rho G minus P vapor by rho G. Vapor pressure is the property minus Vs square by 2G minus HFS. That is the maximum suction head without ca cavitation. This is the maximum suction head which can be obtained without cavitation. Is this clear to everyone? And the last part here, HFS is the frictional head loss in suction pipe. You all know HFS is the frictional head loss in suction pipe. So, the last part of this centrifugal pump is NPSH. Marathon session on app is already going to today and tomorrow. You can be part or you can watch the recording. If you are here, you can watch the recording for marathon session for, for uh, mathematics, engineering mathematics on the Baiju's app.
this session is on Baiju's app. All right. Now the last and the important part is NPSH. What is NPSH? It is a common term used in pump industry. Try to understand this and then we will move to the reciprocating pump. NPSH is the net positive suction head. The total suction pressure head that is static plus dynamic at the pump inlet to make the liquid to make the liquid flow from suction pipe to the pump impeller without causing cavitation. That is called as NPSH. So, NPSH is actually, so we can say, we can say for rise of liquid in suction pipe. If we want the fluid to rise in suction pipe, what should be the condition? P suction should be less than PATM. Suction pressure should be less than PATM. For rise of liquid in the suction pipe, suction pressure should be less than PATM because here the pressure is PATM. But, but to avoid cavitation, But to avoid cavitation, P suction should be greater than P vapor. Isn't it? That is the condition to avoid cavitation. P suction should be greater than P vapor. Or we can say P suction minus P vapor greater than 0. Isn't it? This is the pressure difference. And if we divide by rho g, if we divide by rho g, then it is called as NPSH, which should be greater than 0. That is called as net positive suction head. That is called as net positive suction head. The for avoiding the cavitation because it is a positive parameter. And if we convert it into head, that is called as net positive suction head. Right? Now, there are two type of NPSH. There are two types of NPSH, try to understand. One is called as NPSH minimum. That is minimum NPSH. Minimum NPSH required to avoid the cavitation. Minimum NPSH is the minimum NPSH which is required to avoid the cavitation, which is designated by manufacturer. By manufacturer through testing. Through testings. Testing at different operating condition. Operating conditions. It does not depend on, so NPSH minimum is a function of specific speed of the pump. It is a function of specific speed. It is not a function of, it is not a function of type of the fluid. It is not a function of type of the fluid, right? It is not a function of the type of the fluid. It is a function of specific speed and as and we can say as the discharge gets increased, what happens to NS? NS which will also increase. If the discharge gets increased, what is the specific speed of a pump? Do you remember? N root Q upon H to the power 5 by 4. So, if discharge gets increased, NS gets increased and if NS gets increased, then NPSH minimum increases. That is one. NPSH. The another NPSH is, so you will find in each and every pump there is a specified NPSH you will find. That is called as minimum NPSH. If the available NPSH is greater than minimum NPSH, then there will be no problem. But if available NPSH is less than minimum NPSH, then th th there will be cavitation. So, this is the minimum NPSH which is 
required to avoid the cavitation. The another one is NPSH actual. This is available NPSH in actual running condition. In actual running condition. It depends on the fluid. Depends on fluid. Depends on fluid. So, we can say actual NPSH is the total suction pressure at PS by rho G plus v, Vs square by 2G minus P vapor by rho G. That is the formula for actual or available NPSH. This is the formula for available NPSH. Now, if we calculate, look, this is point A, this is point 1. So, if we say P1 is equal to PS, V1 is equal to VS, Z1 is equal to 0 and PA is equal to PATM, VA is equal to 0, ZA is equal to minus HS. So, if we apply the energy conservation equation, if we apply the energy equation between 1 and A, energy equation between 1 and A, so we can say PATM by rho G minus HS minus HS is equal to PS by rho G plus Vs square by 2G plus HFS, isn't it? So, if we calculate this PS by rho G plus Vs square by 2G is equal to PATM by rho G minus HS minus HFS, put in equation 1, previous equation put in the previous equation. What was the previous equation? Previous equation was this. If we put this value in this equation, then equation 1 becomes, so NPSH actual will be equal to PATM by rho G minus HS minus HFS minus P vapor by rho G. That is the expression for actual NPSH. Now, it is the function of HFS. It depends on HFS. So, as discharge increases, do you agree HFS also increases? As the discharge increases, HFS increases, the head loss will increase because HFS is FLQ square upon 12.1 D to the power 5. d to the power 5, right. So, if HFS increases, so we can say NPSH actual will decrease. So, by increasing the discharge, minimum NPSH increases, whereas increasing the discharge, actual NPSH decreases. So, to avoid the cavitation, what we can say, this is the discharge pump capacity Q, this is the pump capacity Q discharge and this is NPSH. By increasing the discharge, NPSH required increases and available NPSH decreases or calculated NPSH. This is actual NPSH that decreases. So, this is the region where NPSH to avoid the cavitation, what we can say? To avoid the cavitation, what we can say? NPSH actual should be greater than NPSH minimum. So, in the first region, there will be no cavitation. Can we say actual NPSH is greater than? So, there is no cavitation in this region, but there is a cavitation in this region. If actual NPSH become less than the 
then the required NPSS, then there will be cavitation. So, to avoid the cavitation, this is the maximum discharge which can be delivered. This is the maximum discharge which can be delivered without causing cavitation. That will be the maximum discharge without cavitation. I hope this is clear. And then last part of our session, a little bit about the reciprocating pump. The last one is reciprocating pump, you can call it as positive displacement pump. This is how piston moves to and fro, delivering the water, you can see. There is a crank, there is a connecting rod and there is a suction pipe, delivery pipe, right. This is how the discharge gets delivered. So, the major, the, the parts are here, theta is the crank angle, here theta is the crank angle that is omega into t omega into 2 is the crank angle r is the crank radius r will be the radius of the crank crank radius right and l will be the stroke length length of the stroke the distance between inner dead center and outer dead center what is the stroke length the distance between inner dead center and outer dead center that is crank length uh, stroke length so we can say l will be when when the the piston is at outer dead center then the crank will be here, when the piston moves to the inner dead center, the crank will be here. So, we can say L will be equal to 2R. Can we say L is equal to 2 into R? That is the relation between L and R. And piston area is AP. Piston area, area of the piston is AP, that is pi by 4 D square. D is the diameter of the cylinder or piston cylinder or piston diameter cylinder or piston diameter is d now look can we say if the piston is moving at a distance x here if the piston is moving at a distance x here this is x let us say this is x x so we can say x will be equal to we can say x will be equal to x will be equal to r minus r cos theta, isn't it? Or if we differentiate or cos theta can be written as omega t, x is equal to r 1 minus cos omega t. If we differentiate, so dx by dt, that is equal to velocity of the piston, that is equal to r omega sin omega t. That is variable. Velocity of the piston is variable, that is why the discharge is variable. Q becomes variable. And that is why the discharge becomes variable. That is how the discharge is variable. It is intermittent discharge. Now, discharge through a reciprocating pump, which is single acting. So, for theta between 0 degree to 180 degree, it is suction stroke. For theta 0 to 180, it is the suction stroke or we can say suction valve opens. When theta moves from 0 to, when, when the crank moves from 0 degree to 180 degree, when crank moves from 0 to 180 degree, it will be suction stroke like this. It will be suction stroke. The water enters into the into the piston, cylinder. Water enters into the cylinder. And from 180 to 360 degree, then the discharge valve opens and it is called as delivery stroke. For theta, for theta, 
वन एटी डिग्री टू थ्री सिक्सटी डिग्री देन इट इज कॉल्ड एज डिलीवरी स्टॉक और डिलीवरी वॉल्व ओपन डिलीवरी वॉल्स ओपन राइट सो फॉर वन रेवल्यूशन ऑफ क्रैंक फॉर वन रेवल्यूशन ऑफ क्रैंक वॉट इज द वॉल्यूम डिलीवर्ड वॉल्यूम ऑफ वॉटर डिलीवर्ड कैन वी से ए इंटू एल दैट इज द वॉल्यूम ऑफ वॉटर डिलीवर्ड इन वन रेवल्यूशन ऑफ क्रैंक फॉर एन आर पी एम रिवल्यूशन पर मिनट फॉर एन रेवल्यूशन पर मिनट द डिस्चार्ज डिलीवर्ड इज इक्वल टू ए इंटू एल इंटू एन बाई सिक्सटी मीटर क्यूब दिस इज द थियोरिटिकल डिस्चार्ज दिस इज द डिस्चार्ज डिलीवर्ड मीटर क्यूब पर सेकेंड दैट विल बी द डिस्चार्ज डिलीवर्ड फॉर एन रेवल्यूशन पर मिनट द डिस्चार्ज डिलीवर्ड विल बी इक्वल टू दिस दिस इज कॉल्ड एज थियोरेटिकल डिस्चार्ज एंड देर इज ए पैरामीटर डिफाइन दैट इज कॉल्ड एज स्लिप दैट इज Q theoretical minus Q actual discharge, or we can say Q theoretical into one minus Q actual by Q theoretical. A is the piston area. You all know area of the piston. L is the stroke or stroke length, and N is RPM, revolution per minute. A L N by sixty will be the discharge. So slip will be Q theoretical minus Q actual. that is always negative oh, sorry that will be positive because theoretical discharge actual discharge is less than due to leakage the actual discharge is less than the theoretical discharge slip is always positive slip is this because q actual is less than q theoretical due to leakage that is called as slip so the negative slip will be desirable in pump or q actual should be greater than q theoretical that is desirable which can be obtained by these two by these the negative slip is desirable which can be obtained by e when pump is operating at very high speed and the suction head is very large compared to the delivery head when the suction head is very large compared to the delivery head because the losses take place in the delivery pipe or after this so these are the two conditions for achieving the negative slip and that is why the suction head or the the suction pipe is very long compared to the delivery pipe in case of reciprocating pump next the work done by the single acting reciprocating pump or the power required to drive the pump the volume of water delivered per second is as q th is equal to a into l into n by 60 that is the volume of water delivered meter cube per second so can we say the weight of water delivered weight of water delivered per second what is weight of water delivered m dot into g into m into g that is the weight of water delivered we can say rho into q into g that is equal to rho into a l n by 60 into g and the work done per second is equal to weight of water delivered weight of water lifted lifted per second multiplied by the distance through which water is lifted total height through which water is lifted the total height that is hs plus hd so the work done per second will be equal to rho into al n by 60 into g into hs plus hd that is the power required to drive the pump that is the power required to drive the single acting reciprocating pump 
work done or the power required and the variation in discharge q variation in reciprocating pump can be minimized by using the air vessels fitted in the suction and the delivery pipe and using the double acting pump in place of single acting pump we can use double acting pump and using the multi cylinder pump double triple like this so this is how the air vessels are used this is how the air vessels are used for uniform discharge air vessels are used for uniform discharge of water to the delivery pipe air vessels are used for uniform flow nearly uniform flow the various advantages of air vessels are almost almost continuous flow at uniform flow rate uniform flow minimum fluid acceleration pump can run at higher speed without danger of cavitation there is a possibility slight possibility of cavitation even in reciprocating pump so without uh, cavitation without chances of cavitation the pump pump can run at higher speed so can q can further be increased considerable loss power loss saving against friction these are the various advantages of using the single acting uh, air vessels in the pump so this is how the double acting pump looks like there is unit 1 there is another unit 2 so for double acting pump for double acting pump for theta 0 to 180 degree for theta 0 to 180 degree suction stroke for unit 1 there will be suction stroke for unit 1 like this but the delivery stroke for unit 2 for unit 2 and for theta to be from 180 degree to 360 degree then it will be delivery stroke for unit 1 for unit 1 and the suction stroke for unit 2 for unit 2 if the piston is moving back then there will be delivery stroke for unit 1 and the suction stroke for unit 2 so the volume of water delivered in one stroke that is twice of a l n by 60 isn't it the discharge delivered is twice of a into l into n by 60 meter cube per second and the power required to drive the compressor so the power required will be equal to power required is equal to rho into 2 into a l n by 60 rho into q into g into h s plus h d so it will be twice it will be twice it will be twice right so that completes our discussion for hydraulic machine i hope you have learnt or you have revised the concept so that completes our discussion for hydraulic machine pump is not very important these are the various topics which are very very important so those which are most important you need to revise 10 to 15 times these are the topics in in fluid mechanics which are very very important the topics which are lesser important but still they are important you should revise these topics around three to five times and the topics which are very very less important hydraulic pump is not very much important so you should revise them a couple of times only that will work so accordingly you should plan your preparation or pr plan your revision in the last moment so the more weightage topics or more more important topics you should give more preference to them more more uh, focused your focus should be more towards the more uh, important question, uh, concept rather than the topics which are least important so that is all from my side guys thank you very much for joining in and see you there see you all again for next session till then enjoy take care have a good day and a great future ahead do well in your examination i will meet you again very soon 
with the new session or we will meet in the prediction series as well as the F1 series. All right. So enjoy. Take care. Have a good day, guys. Thank you very much. I will share the PDF of this session to my telegram group. If you have not joined me on the telegram, please do join me. That is mechanical by Chandrasekhar. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for taking part.